Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. Tonight we bring you Season 2, Episode 9, Embrace the Dark. Let's start by meeting our vampires. Hi, I'm Alex Ward, and I play Jasper. Hi, I'm Erica Ishii, and I play Annabelle. I'm Xander Genre, and I play X, the Malkavian. Hi, I'm Cynthia Marie, and I play Nellie G. B. Dave Walters, I play Victor Temple, and I'm having a pretty good night so far. <laughs> Welcome, vampires. Our very special guest vampire, Mr. Mark Meir, will be joining us later at a dramatically appropriate moment. I'm your storyteller, Jason Carl. Now, we all know that you're waiting for Carver or somebody to... Uh, kick me out of my podium for a few minutes and talk about season three. But it's a little too early to share our plans with you just yet. Don't panic. There are four epilogues coming up to round out the season, and we'll see you at WonderCon live on March 30th. Now, let's thank Dogmite for the wonderful dice boxes and our beautiful storyteller screen. Hello, screen. We'd also like to thank you, our family, for showing us support and love and generosity of spirit through this whole season. This is not something that we could do without you, and we're very, very grateful. Thank you very much. Now, a few nights ago, the Coterie looked their enemy right in the face when they met Prince Vannevar at his Elysium while Annabelle encountered some Valkyries. Let's recap that action now with a look at Ramona's sketchbook. Dom, I gotta hand it to you. Never thought you'd find a way to spy on the Barons, but you pulled it off. And now you've outdone yourself, swinging from a chandelier over the Camarilla Elysium to get a bead on the baddies. These baddies. Real talk, we're all of us monsters, us licks, us vamps. We all have a beast inside us, and we have to deal with that every night. It's never easy, and sometimes we let it get the better of us. When that happens, we try to do better the next night. But this pair, Prince Vannevar and Princess Suzanne, well, let's just say that they give all us monsters a bad name. Our diplomacy squad. Undead, spooky, and cheekbones. They did their best to make a solid case for compromise, but Princey Boy wasn't having any of that. So it's gonna be a fight, okay? I could have told him that, saved him the trouble. I get why they tried, but we've seen already what the Camarilla does to anyone who won't bow down, haven't we? Screw that. And where was our fearless leader of the resistance while all this was going down? She and our dude Nines were away down south hanging with the Valkyries. Sycorax and Casey, my kind of warriors. Dangerous dames of the undead variety, right? Hard to convince to take sides though, even against the Camarilla. They wanted some proof from our gal pal. Too tough to get the pack down there pronto, so hey, I did the thing on the wing and flew down to check it out with my own peepers. The Valkyries set up a test. Bell had to take out a scumbag vampire drug dealer fouling up their hood. He was so dirty, so fucked up with scary and evil shit that she dug deep and let her anger do the talking. The righteous anger of the born revolutionary. I admit I gave her a hand, but she stopped the threat and made sure the scumbag will be accountable. If he fucks up again, he's a dead undead. Thank you, Megan Jessup, for those fantastic sketches out of Ramona's book. Now, tonight we have another sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Tender. Now, it's a new dating app, and it's still in beta, but they tell us that it's very mm, effective, and uh, I understand that it's all the rage on Griffith College. Um, we'll have a word for them at the break, so stick around and check it out. 
While our friends at Backblaze are not the official sponsors of this episode, they did make this episode possible. So check them out and show them some love at backblaze.com slash LA by night. Backblaze also helped make it possible for us to take our live show to WonderCon on March 30th. What's going to happen? Well, we understand that there is a mysterious figure called the Baron of Anaheim who has yet to be accounted for. Is he a friend of the Anarchs or uh, is he a foe? Can he be recruited into the fight against the Camarilla? We will be joined by X and Eva as we attempt to answer some of those questions. And that's at 8 p.m., on Saturday, March 30th at WonderCon in Anaheim. And family, yes, it will be recorded and shown later. Now, before we get started, I believe Erica has something that she would like to share with the cast and crew. Uh, As a little bit of a wrap party gift, I worked with Hero Forge, the miniatures company, and Den of Imagination, and made a little diorama of our coterie. So all of the miniatures were made on Hero Forge, and they actually custom made us a couple of parts to uh, make sure that everybody was just right. That's so cool. Got a little, so cool. And then um, everything was painted by uh, by Den of Imagination, and they made the diorama complete with a little light up dance. The floor tomorrow. lights up. That is true. Yeah. It's the Maharaja. So, yeah. yeah. The Maharaja. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So we we didn't have like a we didn't have a reference for the club, so they kind of made it up, and now it's that's perfect. how the Maharaja looks to <laughs> uh, me. Please X, no grease <laughs> on the dance floor. Everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> Moonwalking yeah, is so allowed. Thank you yes. so much to all of them for Yay. this just beautiful, awesome. beautiful work. And I love you all. Yeah. 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 I, I also you, appreciate Erica. that mine is gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure they're to yeah. scale. They're pretty darn close. Thank you, Erica. So the Coterie has attempted the path of diplomacy, and their hand of friendship was not only rejected, but scorned by the Camarilla. Left with few alternatives, it is time to see what path they will choose next. Let us tell a vampire story. We return tonight to where the Chronicle started, Griffith College. The campus takes up a city block in the eastern part of Hollywood. And normally, normally, it's crowded with a diversity of young people, even late at night. But the weather has been, as we know, unusually cold and wet in Southern California for the last several weeks, and the weather is keeping the students inside. Tonight, two figures walk alone along the damp asphalt lanes and under the dripping palm trees that dot the campus. Let's join them now. Stop, stop, stop. (laughs) Why? Okay. Why? (laughs) It's already raining. Why are we in a fountain? Uh, Because fountain hopping, we just splash around in this one until campus security comes and then move on to the next one. 
I mean, I'm normally all for stuff like this, but I think if campus security catches me, it's been one too many times. What did you do last time? We don't want to go into that. Splash. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get this straight. They asked you to kill him, and you didn't kill him, but you ended up killing somebody else through that? Uh, yeah, it was... There's this new thing that I figured out that I could do where I, I could I could make people angry and they could turn on each other and I didn't know I didn't know it was gonna be that bad and it was really bad. Everything, the whole night would just went completely foobar. I just and so fountain hopping is how I uh, cope with crippling self hatred, doubt, and anxiety. Go, that's <laughs> okay. Great. I, I mean, why not? I spend a lot of time in the ocean. This mm. is fine, right? It's not dirty or anything or gross or whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Don't do that. Ah. Okay. And I'll start <laughs> aggressively squirting back at you. Um, the thing is, they they kind of asked you to do something specific. Well, why didn't you? Because I still think that no single kindred should be judge, jury, and executioner. It doesn't matter if it's Vannevar Thomas, royal asshole, or me. I don't care who this guy is. There should be a system for this. I want to prove to them that there can be a better way. I still think that we can be... Stop, 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 stop. All right, now stop splashing. Okay, stop. Take a look at the reflection, okay? Look at the water. Is this like a... Just do is it. Is this a mystical... Just do thing? it! Now, you see your face in the water, right? Mm-hmm. Is this face that you see, or your face right here? Oh. Which one's more real? I mean, mine, because that one goes away when you... When you splash your friend with... No, I'm okay, okay. not going to do that. Okay, okay. Now, let's say you're basing that off of, this is real because we can touch it, right? Mm -hmm. And if we touch this, it's going to gonna ruin it, right? Because this is more of a concept. Mm -hmm. This is just something incorporeal, or I don't know if that's the right word for that. Right? Ephemeral. 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 Now, let's say there are good intentions and good actions. Which one's more real? <sighs> Come Don't on. do this! Don't just play the game with me! Okay, okay, okay. Um, <sighs> good actions. Good actions are, are more real. Preferable. Have concrete results. Good, 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 good. I what? think that intentions should be factored into things. Sure. That... Just as reflections happen naturally. Yeah. But who determines what is good? Is it you? No. That's the thing. Yeah. Is I shouldn't be the one to determine this. Yeah, then who? A jury of peers? Cool. Where did you get one? I didn't have one at the time, and he gave me an out. He said he said he wanted to to to, to do it. To do the thing. To do the thing. Yeah. And have sex? And... No! Oh. No! We're oh, talking oh, oh. about I, we 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 blood bonded, we, Ramona blood bonded him. Oh, you buried the lead there. What'd you do? I just, she, he, they wanted me to kill him and I said that I was supposed to kill him and he said, no, I'll drink blood and I had Ramona do it. She's smart and, and she'll deal with it and he'll do community service. And everything turned out fine, right? Kinda. I mean, the thing is, no matter which choice you made, the outcome would have happened. Do you know what I mean? And that's the thing is it's it's like your hypothetical scenario where you where you make where you accidentally make a child and then and then you 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 sink them into the ocean and huh. and it's it's and, totally and theoretically you, theory yeah there's more than one way when you're skinning a cougar to do that and therefore I, I don't want to come across as I'm judging you. I just want to help. And this is the best way that I know how. But you're judging me a little bit. Yeah. No, a lot. I don't mean to, but that's the action. I mean, look, I thought that if we, if we could 
have this compromise that we could kick the can down the line if, if I just, I want there to be a better way, you know? I still think that we can try to be better in a complicated world, right? Probably. The thing is, the, the, the loose ends that you leave, or that you bury, or that you drown, or that you sink, come back. And it's whether or not you're ready to deal with it that is the issue. I have to, I wanna be honest with you because I can't be honest with a lot of people. Yeah, you can tell me anything. And it won't change our relationship? No, of course not. I trust you. Sometimes we do things that we think are good, but maybe aren't. I totally feel that, yeah, yeah. I've been spying on you, Annabelle, the whole time. Now, I don't know if what Therese can see, but she's very powerful, and even doing this, it's putting me in danger. Wait, wait, what do you mean, spying on me? Well, she th see things through me, maybe, or I- Baron Therese? Well, I also tell her things, because she asks. At first, I thought she was just excited about my job, and, and that I was helping, but it, then she started asking questions about politics and other things, and then I, I'm sorry. But I'm not, X. I'm sorry. It was the only way that I could continue to see you, and I don't, I'm, I, I wanna, I'm like James Bond, kind of. But it, it hurts. But, 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 but we don't have to, we don't have to deal with that anymore, okay? Because I, I ran away. Don't do that. X, don't, I, start I thought, <laughs> stop it, but stop. Just get it away. <laughs> God, See? I, I thought you were like the one vampire that I could trust. Like I, I, I thought. The thing is, I told her that Jasper wanted me to go and hang out with you guys, and then she got interested, and I thought she was just no. paying attention to me, and I didn't know. But then you did, and you still. Because she. She knew about what you talked about. She knew about the accident that is under the ocean. The hypothetical scenario that it's, it's, okay, we'll deal with that later. One thing at a time, Annabelle, one thing at a time. Um, I, so, um, yeah, yeah. I am yeah. disappointed. Okay. I'm terrified. Can we still be friends? I mean, I don't, when, when we, when I came to you for advice and for, and when I made mistakes, and you told me that everything was okay and that you would be there for me. You you so meant that, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everything I said I meant, I, I just, I had to tell her whatever I heard. But Does she didn't she, care, she didn't mostly care. Does she know everything? I, X? I don't know what she can do. At one point, my, my clan, we could be, Connected, or in the future we're connected. It's, it's in the, it, it's a mental thing. It's a good intention with a bad action. I just want to be friends. You've always been there for me. They're the hardest two and a half months of my life. And now I don't know how much of that was real. It's all real. It's all, it was really there. I can't, I don't, so, you know I have a hard time determining. But in my mind, it's real for whatever that's worth. I believe you. It's okay. I'm sorry. 
party. I know, I, I know what it's like to be scared. <laughs> you have to do things you don't want to do. It's, it's well, okay. There's more. Okay, out of oh. the fountain, out of the fountain. <sighs> hey. <sighs> Okay, 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 yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're going, we're bright going. Flashlights in your face. Uh, okay, of, uh, we're going. Camp uh. security guards. It's so bright I'm oh, in stones. your face. Okay. Uh, hey, which dorm are you in? Get out of Get out of there. Okay, okay, right, okay. Right. Right. Sorry. <sighs> Can we go back to the the meeting place in uh. the sanctum or whatever? <sighs> Get moving. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Um, um okay. Uh yeah. Uh, what? What now? Let's so walk what and now? talk. Let's walk. Yeah. And okay. Talk. Well, so you I, walk through campus. We could, I sort of um, left. Santa Monica. Uh -huh. But all of it, like I left, left, and I don't think the I can. The drum circle and the pier, and I don't think I can go back. Where are you staying? What do you? I need a favor. Like a favor, favor. I just need somewhere to crash. I need. Oh to my god, you can crash in me. Uh, no problem. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, it's this is this ter this is territory stuff, isn't it? I'm really scared. Yeah. Can I have access to your territory because I don't have one? Is it might not be your decision to make a? No, I mean, it's definitely not. But if, if I do, like, how do I know? I don't know. That's that this isn't that you're not still spying. What would a spy do? This? I'm not a spy. <laughs> yeah, they would. That is exactly something that a spy would say. Yeah. I am that's a spy. Right. That's worse. <laughs> you pass by the spot where Sour Sugar used to play in the quad. Uh -huh. No one there now. Campus is so quiet. But anyway, I, I wanted to tell you, I wanted to tell you, everything because I don't want to have secrets anymore. And so that's why I told you. That's that's it. That's all of it. Here I am. I don't know what hold she has over me, and I can't guarantee that everything that I experience won't get back to her eventually, but I don't know what else to it's do. It's okay. It's okay. I can't go anywhere else. No. And I can't, can't. I don't have look, anywhere to live. Look, look, you can crash with me and and we'll talk to Victor and everybody else and But Therese gonna... and the drum circle they're gonna come for me. And that means they're gonna come for you. I can't put you guys in that position. It's just for a little bit until I find somewhere to go. I don't know. I don't know anymore. X. We've da Oh my god, what the hell? We need to go. How long were you there? That's not important. Yeah, it is! It's really fucking important! Hi. Hi, X. What? Okay, well... Listen, we'll talk to them. It'll be okay. We'll protect you. You, you're one of us now, okay? Okay. Sometimes Victor scares me. I don't know. Like, I never really can say that I've been scared by him. It's okay. 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 It's gonna be okay. Okay. Let's go. We, we all make mistakes. That's how we deal with them and our desire to be better that defines who we are. I think you just answered yourself. Let's walk and hug. Yeah, okay. 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 Can we stop by the fountain? The no more the fountains. Fountain, Why am I the adult? <laughs> so, you're leaving campus and heading to the sanctum? Okay. Jasper, you as well? I'm walking with them, mm -hmm. albeit unseen not being seen as you make your way through the deserted campus toward the place where you know you can speak safely. When you arrive, Victor and Nellie are there already. Mm. 
You know, I, it smells real bad. What does? Fountains. Oh, hey. Hi. Oh. We weren't playing in the fountains. We're just. Were you outside in water? Was, I, is it raining outside? Yeah, I mean, yeah. A yeah, little bit. yeah, a little bit. And then, it smells like wet dog. That's me. Sorry. Ugh. It, you know, uh. Oh, me too. Why are you wearing flowers? It. We're. we're Setting up the launch of the Maharani. Chocolate Drop's gonna do her concert tour. We're gonna call it the Aloha Tour. People aren't gonna know if it's the first time she's playing a place or the last time she's playing a place. Like, it's gonna be fantastic. I love that. The, right? And it looks very good on you. You know, I'm secure enough in my masculinity to wear uh, so I don't. I don't think neutral. it's, yeah, I, yeah, I don't think it's about gender. I think it's a lot more about specifically being a dad. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's dope. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm gonna make this trend. Mark my words, I'm gonna make this trend. Okay. <sighs> right. Yeah, but you guys do stink though, like more than usual. Hmm. Well, guess we're not welcome in Margaritaville. <laughs> well, you could change your outfit and perhaps maybe stink less. I yeah. did change mm. once. Yeah, you do look better than normal. I don't, I don't yeah. That's... You look less like a sheep. True. Yeah, that mm. coat. More '90s I rocker. Actually, like the sheet better than this. Oh well, I had to kind of leave in a hurry. Yeah. To what do we owe the pleasure, sir? Huh. Uh, I... Can X stay with us for a little bit? I mean, you know, we're kind of moving around a lot ourselves these days. That's why we're here now. But I can help. I'm I'm good at helping. I mean that. We've broken ground on the new club. It's probably going to be uh, complete soon. That's why I'm, I'm looking at some of these finishing touches. And I, I would like your input on the, you know, the... This is, of course. this is, he he really needs to, a place to stay. What's wrong with Santa Monica? I mean, besides the you obvious stuff her? that's wrong with Santa Monica. Yeah. I, He's not the most pleasant to be around. I can understand him wanting a break. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's, I ran away. Mm -hmm. I fully, I deserted the territory. And I need somewhere to go. <laughs> you ran away? Like, I'm, you need permission to leave? I mean, he did come to a circus. N Therese has gotten... Well, you guys know. You saw her at Elysium. Sure. Mm. And, you know, she, she was... I think... I think she's turning over. <sighs> Wait. What do you mean? Well, there are new, stronger vampires that show up, and and they're all. No, no, no! I'm from the Camarilla. No, no, no! And nobody does anything. And I and and she just lets him into the club. And I was supposed to hang out with Jeanette, and Teresa said that I couldn't because she had to leave for the Elysium meeting. But it was way earlier than I had it on the schedule that I was supposed to hang out with Jeanette. She said that I couldn't. Did he already tell you this? I mean, in so many, not in so many words, but yeah. Hey, wait, what is what is that thing? You have to say something three times? Like, what, have you said three times that you think Therese has crossed over? Like, I think Therese has crossed over, I think Therese has crossed over, I think Therese has crossed over. Fuck. We, you, never mind. <sighs> well, we suspect. She said she was willing to pretend to play ball, but she didn't say that she was going on over to the ivory tower. Hey, well, let's just, for the moment, let's just, not say that out loud, because we don't know who's listening. Right? Right, Victor and Nelly and Jasper, you saw a lot of kindred at the Getty. Mm -hmm. You saw Strauss, you saw the Prince, you saw Suzanne, a lot of kindred you don't know, but you did not see Therese. I mean, she wasn't where we were. She, she, she said she had to go early to meet with the Prince. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go with her and she told me no. Did you see her after the event? No. I sort of took that chance to run away and I've been uh, on the run. Uh, interesting. Hmm. I feel like that's a problem we need to deal with later, not now. Yeah, I think we have some fairly plausible deniability at this exact second of you just being around. Like, it's not necessary to go to war with Therese just because you're here tonight. Well, if I stay here, there's a chance she might come after me. And my coterie, the drum circle. I, 
I, I don't know. I, they might not even know that I'm gone. Well, you've hung out with us a night in the past, so I think you're safe for a little while. It feels good to be safe. And Therese being Therese during our meeting is one thing. Her attempting a show of force in my domain is something quite different. Yeah, she's... We've... Got, we're being assaulted on all sides with the Inquisition and the camera roll. There's no way that she's going to try to start a war over this. This is the perfect time to start a war oh, over there's, this. Oh, there's a way. I mean, Abrams made his bullshit move against me in the midst of all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I'm, I'm officially asking you as a kindred, can I crash on your territory? Yes, but please behave. I can't promise anything. I do have her phone number, and I will turn you over if you become a problem. Okay. But this might be good for us. Maybe if you can get through to Jeanette, maybe we can, like, work something out here. Maybe she can talk some sense into her sister. I, I'm a little bit scared to talk to anybody over there right now. I texted Jeanette, but then I sort of lost my phone right afterwards. So it's okay. A, yeah. Just uh -huh. take a couple of nights, unpack, you're safe here. It, stay close tonight, just in case. Okay. Oh, wait a second. Don't we have that other appointment tonight? Oh. Yes. I can help. Uh, I'll take notes, or... Uh, this I'll... is less of a note-taking situation, and more of a we're-gonna-go-deal-with-Chaz situation. I'm great at making deals. I've sold at least four cars in my life. This is less of a we're gonna do a deal with Chaz situation and more of a we're gonna go kill Chaz situation. I'm gonna kill Chaz. Wow, that's new. Do you know that, okay. I tried to talk. They seem not to take us seriously. Whoa. It was decided. They might need more motivation. I, well, I was under the assumption that the plan when we got there was to convince them that we wanted to join them, but apparently that plan flew out the window as soon as you both opened your mouths. Just saying. My goal was to stall for time, and I feel like we did that. Yeah, that's what I thought the goal was, was stalling for time. Okay, wait, Jasper, you're very smart. Don't you think if we just walked in and suddenly threw ourselves on Vanivar's mercy that that actually wouldn't have made them more suspicious? Not I didn't that. say throw it. I did exactly what I planned to do, is to ask questions and make it seem like I was interested and then leave. Which is what I did. Which is what I thought we talked about. Well, I was fully interested. I mean, I did find a lover. Oh, you were very interested. Are you Gross. okay yet, by the way? Because you were not... Apparently not. She just called her her lover. Ooh, yeah. Is that... I thought... I mean, I knew she... What happened? Huh? You remember when I was made to do a certain dance? Uh-huh. That happened to her, but worse. What dance did you do? It, without dancing. Unless... Or horizontally. Pull that all out there. Sheesh. Uh, <laughs> there may or may not have been some influencing going back and forth. Wait, 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 wait. I feel like I missed a lot here. Uh, yeah, yeah. You did miss a lot. You missed a lot. We Th went... Are you okay? Are you okay? I She's fell in love. What do yeah. you want me to do? I'm so happy for you. <sighs> it did, but what? Uh, you remember Brad, yes. right? Yes. That's... You know, you know how Brad feels. Yes. She got her mind. Maybe she did that to you. No, 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 no. See, I I did something to her. Fuck. Mm. Really? Yeah. Real? Really? Yes. It's happening again. <sighs> yeah, you stay close also, <laughs> then. Uh, yeah, I guess we haven't had a chance to talk. We went. I felt like it went great because we're all still alive. It, well, that, uh, I mean, that was going to happen whether it went bad or good. Uh, incorrect. <laughs> you we saw Strauss? Left the building alive regardless of what happened. Yeah, Elysium. Well, Nobody can use their powers or uh, kill people. It's Bullshit. not a thing. No, you can't get caught using your powers. That's how that works. And we were in no position to catch anybody. Oh, right. well, great. Great! Great! So, spoke with Vannevar. Uh, laid out diplomacy. Laid out discussions. Laid out uh, the possibility of a whole new convention of thorns. Like, discussing a whole new way to do all of this. Cool. 
he was unreceptive, as realistically I had to think he would be, but why, at least the seed was planted. Uh, why would you think that you could reason with Vannevar when he has declared himself royalty in the city? Why do you think you can reason with undead monsters? Burn! That was a sick burn. For you. Uh, okay, you know you... what? You were a guest in this home. <laughs> I live here now! Yeah, uh, mm. Kind of. Yeah. Open war doesn't serve any of us, and honestly, to tell you the truth, even though I hate Chaz, probably secondarily to you, I don't know that this move tonight is the right one. I'm gonna do it. I'm I'm on the team, but it, if I would rather we found a way to talk through this, I will call Therese right now. I swear to God. Sorry. Sorry. But if we got to do it, what what are we doing? Well, there's the abandoned um, warehouse that we've met him before. Mm -hmm. That I suggest um, sending a text message. I can send him one, telling him to meet us there. Do you I think he will? I think he will. <laughs> it depends on what you say in the text message, but I think he will too. Did you see him eyeballing you at Elysium? Yes. Have you seen him do anything else anytime they're in the same room together? I hate him. So you should send much. him a picture of you. Yeah. A selfie, the kids call it. Okay. Okay. I'm doing no such thing. No, a simple text telling him to come over should suffice. And we just hit him? Well, he's not going to be alone. Yeah, Chauncey. And what was the other one? Cl Clancy? What was it? The, what was it? He, the big one and the little one. Oh, they're both two goons. Nah, I'd be more worried about the little one, honestly. Like, big guys just are used to being big guys. But when you have, like, a little guy that's dangerous, like, watch out for the little guys. It's kind of like... Yeah, yeah, easy. right? It's exactly this. Yes, 100%. I mean, we've been there before. Um, I mean, I, I think if we can get there early and maybe get in position to l lure him into the room, maybe we can have, like... We can get in position so we don't have a repeat of a certain... Mm -hmm. I've done some upgrades to the area. Really? What happened? Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah. it's not as awful as it was when we first got there. That's all. Have you talked to Ramona? I remember she used to live there. She might be some help with this. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah. I um. Okay. M maybe uh, you could text her because I don't have my phone right now. Um. I'll oh right. Call her. Yeah. I can just call her because this is happening tonight, right? Yep. Looks that text. way. Let's do it. Wait. Hang on. Before you call. Uh, when we got back to the college, she wasn't here. Have you talked to her lately? Yeah, she's fine. She's around. She's uh, hanging out all over town. Yeah, in fact, what happened with your thing? We told you what happened with that. What, what, did, what did you do? We got the Valkyries. We got the Valkyries. Point of order. We, you did, if you got the Valkyries, that's great and all, but the Valkyries only really assist us with the Nosferatu problem if we give the Nosferatu what they want. They didn't join us. They said if we got the Valkyries, they would double what they are potentially going to give in order if we give them what they asked for. What's the formula for potential energy? Why, do, why is Golden interested in them to begin with? I thought he was kind of, he sent signals like he wasn't going to fight, so why would he want us having these, like, hard hitters? Well, for whatever reason, I got him, and Golden will give us double what he said he would if you give him, ass, if you give him access to Griffith Park. I mean... I I meant what I said. I got to talk to you. I got to talk to Eva. I mean, yeah. I, I, I can't begin to say I understand what's happening in Griffith Park, but I do know the moment the Nosferatu were in, they're in forever. Yeah. Hmm. I don't think he's happy. Is he ever? That's fair. I... He smiles sometimes. He smiles when he's about to hurt somebody. Okay, okay, okay. There is somebody here that never gets to speak their mind. All right? Now let's just, let's give him a chance. Jasper, you've got something to say. Everybody shut up and let him say it. Well, Now stop it. Let him speak. What I was the floor is yours. <laughs> I can't 
can't even take him seriously sometimes. No, you're absolutely welcome here, X. 100%. Yes. Thank you. Please proceed, sir. Go on. So. As I'm sure you're aware, I am not a fan of that deal because the only person it really affects out of the four five of us Smooth. is me and Eva. Because we're the only two people that we know of that live there. And they get to run rampant through all of the things that we've been working, and her a lot longer than I, working on. Now, I'm fully prepared to say no to the deal that I asked for. I'm not giving them a tour of anything. But apparently this is something that's asked of you, so ultimately you have the final decision. And due to you being barren, you can say whatever you want. But he would never speak against you in your home. You'd say that, but how many other barons do that? He's not other barons, though. He's always stuck up for us. Everybody has something that they will eventually give up if what they're getting in return is great enough. That's how bartering works. It, you know, again... He is a Ventru. I am, and never is a long time, but I meant what I said to Golden. I'm more interested in what you and Eva think, and you all know the stakes that are in front of us. You all know what is in Griffith Park, and if you feel like it is not worth it, I will respect you and back you in that. But I will say, remember what he said. We may not be able to stop it, so at least we could profit from it. I mean, I'm happy to stand in the doorway of my place and block anybody who comes in, but that seems like a great waste of my time. Have you had a chance to speak with Eva? I haven't. No, I haven't. I've been doing other things. Listen, I don't want to be on opposite sides of this issue. I don't want this to become a thing that causes strife in this happy family that we all have and share. But what is going on in that place is something that's very important to me and is something unlike very, unlike many other things that happen in this world that I would be willing to put myself in front of and expire for. Because I, people who aren't on our side, getting whatever's down there can only be bad for us. You know what? The whole reason that we're doing this is to protect our home. It's to protect the home of every single kindred. And if that means giving up the help of the Nosferatu, then that's what we have to do. It doesn't mean we have to give up their help. It just means we don't get access to that specific thing. We can still buy other things from them. That's how it works, but they will never 100% be on our side, ever. A, That's how we all work, present company excluded. Again, whatever you and Eva decide, I'll back. Well, I'll speak with her. But if I cut my deal with Metnik, because I'm all for some security upgrades and I'm definitely in the need of a new phone and some new infrastructure, is that going to complicate your thing? No, not unless Metnik's price is something to do with my home. No, and Nelly can still have a Amalia design the next I mean, season. Uh, you hundred percent have to do that. I mean, I felt that was implied. Like there yes. was no more discussion necessary for that. But as for the price of Griffith, it's, it's okay. It seems very high. Mm-hmm. It's not one that you have to pay. No one will ask you that. Okay. Now speaking of your phone, Victor, two nights ago, you broke it in half. Have you replaced it, or have you been Solon's phone? I have I have a burner, because I kept several burners around, because we've dealt them out like poker chips. Smartphone? Yeah. 
but I've made a point to not say anything even remotely sensitive because it's got, you know, none of my usual protections. So I just have to assume the world is listening to every single thing that goes through it. But um, I would ask Campbell to get word to Mednick that I'm prepared to proceed on that arrangement. Which my recollection of which was I would provide the resources to set up a local Shreknet mm -hmm. in exchange for essentially access to said local Shreknet. My understanding is that you now have a guy on the internally on your staff to take care of these sorts of things. Yeah, he's a little forgetful, but you have a solid guy otherwise. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to take it as read that you have communicated this to Mitnick. That is my intention, yes. Okay. I have made a note. Well, I guess send your message and uh, see if he replies. No other preparation that we want to do for this. Well, I mean, I assume if he replies, we still have some time. It's not like we'll immediately be there when... Oh, us Toreadors move quite fast. Yes, I know, but hey we don't move as fast as he does. And by the way, how do you want to go about killing someone who's way older than us? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a sleazy fucker, but he's a powerful sleazy fucker. Because this is all well and good of a plan, but if we can't do it, he's just gonna murder all of us. You spent some time with him. Do or you know uh, more accurately, do? probably murder the four of us and then leave you, because that's what he would do. Understood. Um, I do have backup lined up, just in case. Oh, good, in case we're all murdered, then you have backup, great. Before that. Yeah, I would start with the backup, actually. I'm not trying to get scuffed up if I don't have to. <laughs> you do what you need to do. Victor, you are burner smartphone. Receives a text message. It is from Fiorenza. And it says, Are you free for a call? I reply, uh, Not sure about this line, but yes. A few seconds later, the phone rings. You recognize her number. Uh, I do not put it on speakerphone initially, but I do okay. answer. Victor, my boy. Congratulations on your star turn in Elysium. It was an experience, ma'am. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Vannevar, Suzanne, and Strauss are quite striking. What are your impressions of your prince? I wasn't aware that I had one. <laughs> I'm waiting. I don't like to wait. I will say, uh, here in my respect, he was more than I expected, but it doesn't really change what's coming. Not really. And what of his associate, the Mademoiselle? <sighs> I think she's a product of her time, but she seemed quite taken uh, with my dear associate, Nellie. I see. As is most everyone, if we're being honest. Quite. <laughs> well, I received a number of very interesting reports about your visit. Yes, ma'am. Anything that uh, you might be able to share? What is your plan now I need to make him listen I need to find a way to make him listen I thought you might say that are your associates in agreement with you to a greater or lesser extent yes I don't think any of us want open hostility quite it is bad for business Definitely bad for business. Is your associate, Mr. Hartwood, there? Would you like me to put you on speakerphone, ma'am? We are in mixed company. Would you be so kind? Absolutely. And I turn it on and I say, um, we do have visitors from Santa Monica. Oh. Hello? Boom. 
Ah, Mr. X. Hi. Silence. Okay. Mr. Hartwood. Oh, shit. Hi. I congratulate you on your deportment in Elysium. It is the talk of the Camarilla <laughs> in Los Angeles. I'm sure it is. I seem... Well, I tried my best to be polite. It was noted. What was also noted is that you gave no answer to the question. I... I'm sure people noticed that. One might say it is the most significant thing they noticed about you. <laughs> well, I did have to ask some questions to really know the full gravity of what I was saying yes or no to. And I got those questions answered. So now, knowing the full picture of what I've been asked to, I'm taking it under advisement. Do you feel you have sufficient information to formulate a response? I do indeed. Excellent. I should like your answer, please. Ah, I see. To you. Ah. Well, um, my answer to whether or not I'm going to be the sheriff of the Camarilla is... No, thank you. Is that your final answer? It is what? Silence! You see, unfortunately, the major thing I had a problem with is when I asked the prince the question of do I still get to do what I want, he said no. And the reason I'm on the side that I'm on is because I like to do what I want. I don't like to have to do what other people want. So, unfortunately, if that answer had been different, my answer may have been different, but because that answer was what it was, my answer has to be no. I appreciate the revelation in your thinking and logic. I assume that regardless of what happens to me, this will probably be the last time we speak. So, thank you for being polite to me, Firenza. We shall see what we shall see. Look to your safety, Mr. Hartwood. Thank you. Now then, yes. as for the rest of you, it has been wonderful, really, to make your distant acquaintance. You all recognize that you are now in the gravest of jeopardy, yes? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I look forward to hearing of the future developments. No matter what happens, it should be interesting. Quite. Good luck, Victor, my boy. I look forward to looking back on all of this and laughing one day. <laughs> the line goes dead. Flip it close. You you know what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, as long as you know, you have a plan, right? Nope. Okay. Well, as long as there's no plan, that's fine. Welcome to the Coterie X. <laughs> Maybe I should find somewhere else. Ow. Okay. We've uh, we've got to go to the valley for that's where the warehouse is. Mm -hmm. I think we should plan on staying there afterwards. Yeah. Has, uh, have you messaged Ramona yet? We probably need Let to move just give her a call. sooner than later. You want to ring yeah. Ramona's cell phone? Yeah. <clears throat> you are in luck. She answers. Baby B. <laughs> Ramona. What's up? You have eyes on the factory? The factory? Yeah. My old place? Yeah, the one place we met. place where we met? Know. Yeah, that's right. There's... there's Two glowing yellow eyes in the darkness. You remember. How could I forget? I'm touched. Hey, they gave me a cycle. Really? Yes. You got to come riding. This, I, thing, this thing is 
awesome. I'd really like it that. Has. Oh my god, fantastic! I mean, I like that. I'm not very time. good at it yet. You know, like I, I just I promised I her that I. Oh my god, focus! But then, like, yeah, you know, just totally the wind in your down. face and yeah, everything. Come on. Okay, listen. What? Uh, we we're hitting jazz tonight. Oh, it's tonight. And it's at the factory. Good so, choice. Love of Kane. Good I mean, choice. Yeah. Isolated. Yep. Not too masquerade, risky. Ma- no. Masquerade friendly. It's, uh, you know, lots of fallen down parts that could, you know, just oh, accidentally yeah, come some, down around his ears. There's some awesome rebar there. Lots of sharp pieces of wood around. Lots of sharp pieces of wood around. I wasn't really could, thinking about uh, him. Could we not have this conversation on an open line? Is she nearby? Um, Listen, if you can get any eyes over there, any sort of help, we'd really appreciate it. 10 4. No problem. No problem. I'll, uh, I'll have some furry friends uh, on up there for you. Okay. I, I can't leave, you know. We, we made a deal. I got to keep my eyeballs on this dude. Plus, I got to cycle. Yeah. I can't, I can't give that up. Not, not tonight. Okay. You got to come. Right. It, um, you're going to love it. All right. Yeah, it's sexy as hell. It's a date. Cool. Hey, uh, give everybody my love. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What? You're gonna, you, wh- what did you say you were going to do at my place? Uh, kill Chaz? What? No shit. Yeah. Cool. Just keep it under your hat, though? Yeah, on the down low. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Good luck. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Motorcycle. <laughs> the good news? Uh, yeah, we'll have uh, the Rat Pack will make an appearance. Great. Cool. Now we'll win. And hopefully she'll, hopefully she'll give me some updates. Is there anybody else in the Kindred world that we'd like to notify of this? Yeah, since now we have to assume everyone who's monitoring all of our communications <laughs> knows all about this, we probably need to move faster than we'd anticipated. Which, but by the way, night. there is a question that I think needs answering. We all know what Jasper and I will do. I'm not too sure either of you are going to be able to do what has to be done when the chips are down. In what sense? Being able to put a stake through him. Oh, I'm going to do much more than that. Yeah, you say that, but you've said things, and then when you get around him, you do things, and the saying and the doing are not the same. Good intentions and reflections. I'm not unsympathetic to the past. I just am saying we may have a very narrow window to act. And when that comes, you cannot hesitate. I understand. You can't get overly dramatic and start pleading for mercy. It does sound like me. It does sound like me. Yeah. How self-aware you are. I'm so proud. Listen... I'm happy to let you kill him. I really don't care about him at all, but if he gets to the point where he's gonna kill me and I can kill him. You do it. I will do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna die for that. I'm so excited. Look at us murdering. That's like, who's Chaz? (laughs) We'll tell you in the car. Okay. Yeah, have you sent the message? Sending now. I sent two text messages. Two text messages. One to Chaz, and another to Daffodil. The text message to Chaz. Just it's a quick meet me where we first laid eyes on one another in LA. Okay. And the one to Daffodil? Um. Eyes up, be prepared. It's what we talked about. And I send him like the kissy emoji. Daffodil is the first to text you back. You got it, pretty lady. Okay. XOXO. Chaz takes longer. The reply is just a smiley face. All right, it's set. Uh, I text, oh, sorry. No, go, please. 
I text Campbell. Oh, uh, I call Campbell, and um, sir, is my gun back yet from the thing I asked you to do? Yeah, so, yes, sir. It arrived today. It's in your office. Uh, you want me to run it over, pick you up? Where are you, sir? Uh, yeah, we'll we'll swing by. We have to we have to we have coming, to do a thing. You're coming back to the club, sir? Uh, passing by briefly. I'll have it prepared. Uh, do me a favor. If anybody asks, tell them I'm at the club. Tell them that you are at Club Maharaja. Yeah. Yes, sir. There's also a package here for um, Miss Nelly. Does it say who it's from? I believe it is from uh, Mr. Abrams. Shall I hold it here for her? Take a close look at it. Make sure it's not ticking or anything. And uh, <laughs> We scanned it through the usual security measures, right. sir. Good. It, it is not an explosive device. Uh... Yeah. Okay. We'll 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 pick it up on the. Let me think about that one. Don't tell her, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll uh we'll be passing through. But um. Anything else, sir? Should we have car driver ready for you? Anything at all? Refreshments. Uh, send Bailey here to the college. Actually. Send Bailey to pick you up. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got to do a thing. Yes, sir. Uh, and also we're moving out to the valley as soon as possible. So get things ready to move. Well, the basic structure is finished, sir, as you know. You could relocate to temporary headquarters there at any time. It would not be comfortable for you. I think we need to go ahead and plan on laying our heads down there tonight. Tonight, sir? Yeah. Keep a couple... Uh, once we get my package there, uh, leave a handful of guys there to keep an eye on the Maharaja, but move everybody else over to the Maharani. I think things are going to heat up abruptly. Yes, sir. We'll get right on it. Immediately. Yeah. See you in a minute. Actually, send the package with Bailey. I'm not coming to the club at all. Yes, sir. Okay. I hang up. Ride's on the way. Okay. I can drive if you want. <laughs> you, you, it Fair is fair. You weren't bad at it. I'm a fantastic driver. Oddly. Oddly. No, but we, we, have, a, we have, a, have a pretty solid guy. Okay. Yeah. So, back to my question from before. How do we do this? Because saying we're going to do it is all well and good. Mm-hmm. But how? Well, Chaz is coming after me. He knows you guys are going to be there. So there's no sense in hiding anyone here. Except for maybe you, X. Do he we, wouldn't know. Do I don't we, know what's happening. Do we pretend like we're joining? Why not? He knows you guys are going to be far behind. He's not dumb. Well, and he can see and hear us and... Mm -hmm. Actually, oddly, there's a there's a real chance he can read our minds. Actually. Oh, good. He knows that we think he's an asshole. Then. I'm sure, I'm sure he, he knows that so yeah, many people right. think he's an asshole. I don't asshole. think he cares. He gets out alive. Yeah. I don't know who this is. But I agree. So protracted lying may not be in our best interest either. <laughs> nope. The best thing to do is kill him quickly. Um, I have a couple of items that were being sent to me by someone and I haven't seen them yet, so. Oh, uh, you had a package. It's coming, Bailey's coming. I don't know if that's the thing, but um, yeah, yes. Cam Campbell just told me. Excellent. Yeah. Good, yeah. so that helps me. Um, All X and I can help with the goons. Uh, okay, here's what you need to know. Mm -hmm. High-ranking Toreador. Okay. Uh, he is the harpy for okay. the Camarilla. Okay. Uh, he's going to have at least two ghouls with him okay. that I've seen in action and were, you know, pretty tough. I mean, they're just ghouls, but I mean, they're they're impressive ghouls. Okay. Uh, and that's more or less it. Silky smooth. But what happens after? <laughs> we kill the harpy, then what happens? Nah, same thing that happened after we killed the sheriff. I'm gonna become the harpy. No, you're gonna become the harpy. You we can be all the become the harpy. I'm not interested in harpy, but you'd be a great harpy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Let's just try to get through this part of it. Okay. Jasper, yeah. what ideas do you have for this? Lots of stabbing. Good. Solid. Good. That's generally just what I do when I wanna do what we're planning to do. But if we want to get technical about it, what we could do, um, there is a lot of debris. There are a lot of things 
broken things and whatnot when we were from, unless you fixed all of that. Well, I mean, there's some broken de- debris, but... That collapsing staircase still there? Yeah. There's just a small section that's a little bit more beautified. Look, I don't know. I honestly don't. I've never tried to murder somebody of Chaz's power. I honestly don't try to murder people that often. I just kind of happen to do it. Won't do that. I mean, I'll try, but... Let me, let me... Like an Inspector Clouseau-ish. Maybe you should be blindfolded. Let me... Super help me. Let me pose a different question. If someone were hypothetically compensating you for your efforts in a professional capacity, how would you go about neutralizing this person tonight? I'd probably wait for him to walk in. I would be very high up onto the ceiling, clinging up there. And when he walked through the door, I would probably let go, fall very far with a knife outstretched and plunge it very deep into him. Go team. But I don't think it's gonna work on Chaz. So uh, we could try and rig something up to say a lot of these pointy wooden metal debris, debris falls on top of him as soon as he comes to the door. But these are all things that I believe that Chaz will be able to get out of, so mm-hmm. I don't really know what to do. Yeah, we have to assume he will be very fast, possibly faster than we can see. We have to assume he will be able to see and hear all of us and possibly read what we're thinking and also be able to play with our emotions. And that's just all within clan. Yeah, that's not counting whatever else he's picked up along the way. Look, I learned something new. I don't... I don't know how well it'll affect him. But I can poison him. Hmm. Hmm. That's helpful. Yeah. I don't know what it'll do to him. I haven't tried it on anybody yet. I just know how to do it. So we need to distract him. I still need to stab him. I see. Or I can spit it at him. I like that. So... I can do that once he walks into the room or once we're done talking or whatever we're going to do when he gets there. But there's a... uh, You could get really mad and spit at him out of distaste. Yeah, I could. But there is every possibility he will dodge it. The best way for me to get him to do it is to do do something that he will never do. He will never drink from me, so it's a moot point. Hmm. What if I brought glasses and shared a drink with it him? It doesn't work that way. It has to come directly from me. Damn. Mm. Well, well, here's what I suggest. I think the three of us are waiting inside. Say we've come to talk secretly away from the other Baron since the remote location. Uh, maybe we're weighing our options about you know, whether or not we're really going to join. I don't know if Fiorenza is going to have told them what you said yet or not. I can't always I don't know. see how what her play is, and then maybe you two are in hiding until whatever happens happens, and then you make whatever move makes sense. I'd assume that Fiorenza has already told. Um, I think what he's coming for is the stuff that we discussed a while ago, what he thinks he has over my head. Hmm. I can never tell with her. You know, that whole Marcos wasn't really sheriff and therefore we didn't really start a war. That was all her doing. She really helped us out with that. I got to tell I didn't understand at the time what a favor she'd really done. Yeah. So, but. She seems to have her own ideas. Well, we are burning time. Chaz has responded. Just waiting on Bailey. As soon as he's here, we roll. Bailey? whom I assume Campbell has told where to find you, does arrive shortly thereafter, politely knocking to be let in. Open the door, yep. Sure. Bailey is there? Mm Mm-hmm. Sir, hi. Did you bring the packages? I have several things, yes. Um, He has packages in his arms, steps into the room, Mm -hmm. kicks the door closed behind him, Mm -hmm. sets them down on the meeting table. One of them is a small black metal case. Mm -hmm. The other is a large aluminum case. Before a single red rose has been attached to the handle. Before we open these, I say, uh, Bailey, 
Yes, sir. I don't know if it's true. I heard there's a rare Charizard right outside this place in the Seriously? courtyard. What? Yeah, that's, that's what I heard. Yeah. But I did. Feel, oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, don't go too far from the car, though. Like, we got to roll super soon. But if you want to. Yeah, I'll, I'll stand near the vehicle, sir. Yeah. 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 If you'll excuse me. No, 100%. Yeah. 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 Got to catch them all, right? So cool. Yeah, man. Okay. And I do wait before he leaves until I open the, we open these. He loses no time in oh, yeah. is excusing him. Why does he exist? You know, he's made it through, what, three, four missions with us? And, I mean, I mean he's approaching Eve's record at this point, so, you know. And it, it's easier on his mind if I don't have to keep taking stuff from him, so. Yeah, and everybody's like got to have a hobby. Yeah, he's a solid guy. All right, well, the, uh, actually, I, I opened mine. In the small case is the Rafa's pistol. Mm-hmm. Plated in gold. <laughs> You're a giant yes. asshole. Yes. Uh, I have to make a statement, okay? What's the statement? You're going to kill whoever looks at it. If you think, I show it way more often than I actually use it. It's a, I have to make a point. And it was, like, cool when it was all, like, Desert Eagle-y, but now, now. <laughs> but I only got one of them golded. It's fine. It's adorable. Right? I knew you'd appreciate it. And I do holster it. The other one is in the safe. Still back at Club Maharaja. Yes. Well, under lock and key, as it were. Yes. All right. Opening mine. What do you do with the rose? Um, smell it. I'm going to put it down for right now, next to me. And you open That's the case. Nice. Who's that from? An admirer, a friend. Mm. Case opened. They are knives of different shapes and sizes, ranging from small and delicate, gently curved, just right for a lady's evening bag, to practically machete size. They are made out of black carbon steel mm. with crimson red coloration in the blades. They are military grade, and they are extraordinarily sharp grab all of them and start putting them into the holsters that are in my outfit. You were supposed to make me a tack vest, by the way. Like, what happened with that? Like, I don't... We got busy. Uh, we, we have been busy. The large, oversized machete blade unfortunately will not fit in your attire. Damn. What do you want to do with it? I'm going to leave it with Bailey for a moment. Bailey is not in the room. In the car, well, when we go to the car. Mm -hmm. Well, who could actually, who can wheel a knife? A sword. Jasper? Yeah. Would you like a beautiful machete? It's a dope machete. Sure. I have a second hand. Thank That's you. That's a mm -hmm. knife. <laughs> I have to admit, it is a thing of deadly beauty. Mm -hmm. Do you all have those steaks I gave you before? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, no. No, it's them too. Oh. Yeah. Do you have your hunter weapon? We never uh, figured out what that thing did. I mean, it's at the club. Oh, it's too late now. Okay. All right. Well, then are we ready to move? Let's do this. Ready to move. So. You've organized Ready. transportation, a driver. I'd like to take a minute while we're walking over to pull Annabelle aside. Slight private conversation. Just you and Annabelle as you're walking? Yes. I don't know what's going to happen here. But I do know that Jasper's right, and Chaz could get into my head. If this goes terribly wrong, I need you to take me out. You're the only one I trust who would do that. Victor won't do it. Jasper would have too much fun doing it. Annabelle, oh, no tears. This is real. I'll do whatever it takes to protect the people that I love. I promise. Thank you. Love you, Nellie. Love you too, kid. While they're having that discussion, I want to speak with X really just very briefly. I can't find the Charizard. 
Yeah, it's not here. <laughs> X. Now, I didn't hear everything you were talking to Annabelle about. But what I heard was a lot. Um, sorry? X, I don't care. Oh, okay. Good talk. About some of it. Oh. I care about the spying thing. Yeah, I'm like James Bond though, that's cool. Yeah, everybody likes James Bond when they're on his side. Yeah. In that situation, we're not on your side. Oh yeah. But we can talk about it later. Let's just get through tonight. I have bigger things to worry about. Okay. So Bailey has brought one of the club SUVs that belong to your company. <clears throat> he mentions that uh, he's made sure that the emergency kit in the back is fully stocked and ready to go. Yeah, where we're going, um, going to be at least one car. Before he drove a sports car, I probably is going to drive something pretentious, like a big, like, Rolls or something. Um, probably going to have a couple other guys. I think if you see more than two cars, let me know, please. Uh, and be ready to beat a hasty exit. <laughs> and if things get too crazy, call Campbell, please. Could you be a little more specific, sir? Mm, hordes of people pouring into the building, explosions, gunfire. You know. Mm. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, um, yes, sir, of course. Uh, you can count on me. Yeah, 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 cool, cool, cool. Yeah, all right, um, we ready? Let's do it. Let's go. Sure. I type in the address in the GPS. All right, let's uh, do a check of preparations. Jasper, in addition to the machete, mm, I have bring? my knife as always. Your knife? I always have, I have a steak. One steak. And I have my backpack full of my general supplies. The stuff. Tools of the trade, yeah. as it were. Annabelle, are you armed? I've got a steak. Your favorite steak? I, I have mixed feelings about it. Mm. But no pistols, no knives. No. no. X, do you have a weapon? Yeah, I have two guns. Just kidding. Do you have permits for those guns? No. Duly noted. It's illegal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nellie, you are fairly bristling with hidden cutlery. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And I, the steak. I count four knives. Yep. Including your favorite. Yep. And a steak. Yep. And a leather coat. Uh-huh. Anything special about it? It's nicely made. <laughs> she joined Clan Leather Jacket. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I need to get one. Oh, you guys are looking good. You're honorary Bruja tonight. <laughs> I'm glad you have the authority to make that claim. <laughs> I don't know how I feel hey, about that. If random people can declare themselves princes or barons or, you know, you can do sheriffs, that? heck yeah, it seems like anybody can give themselves any title they want. I'm the Duchess of Beverly Wood. Me too. Oh, oh, oh. no, we have to fight. No one of us has to change. No, yeah, and, and, and for what it's worth, I, I would support you in your declaration. Yeah, it's cool. I'm with you. Ooh. Hmm. Mm. Victor, we know that you have the gold-plated Ralphus gun with a dwindling number of rounds in it. Anything else? I've been keeping count. I've been keeping <laughs> count. Uh, and, and also the Hunter Taser that high-powered taser that we originally mm -hmm. had taken from them. Anything else? A lay of flowers and a rapier wit. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like we just raided our father's gun cabinet and are going to fight in the playground. Is that if against that's one uh, of the teachers. If that's how this all plays out, I think we'll be doing all right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did that at all sound like a good idea? <laughs> Let's just go. Well, you are on your way. <gasps> Doesn't take long, as you recall. You have been here before, this abandoned factory. You may recall that this is where you traced the hunters in the Blaine gang months ago. 
You learned that they were operating out of what you thought was a completely abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of Eagle Rock in the valley. It's in an industrial park. The area reeks still of hazardous neglect. Very few working streetlights in this neighborhood. The pavement is cracked, crumbling, stained with decades of motor oil. Dozens of factory buildings in the area, if you recall, they range in age from almost a century to just a few decades. Now, the last time you were here, several of them had third shift work going on in the middle of the night. That's not the case now. You recall that the building was relatively isolated, a large metal and wooden structure in the middle of a deserted parking lot. It has the advantage of being far away from prying eyes, very little risk to the masquerade, but almost impossible to sneak up on. Good and bad for you. It's a big hulk of a building, crisscrossed with half-rotten catwalks, splintered wooden supports inside the vast interior. You recall that the uh, huge manufacturing floor was littered with broken glass and metal shards, rat droppings, and that there are rusted remains of cannibalized assembly lines, metal machinery that we really can't identify anymore what it was once used for, slowly disintegrating, conveyor belts sagging and rotting into the floor, cavernous furnaces and mixers standing idle, a perilously rickety old staircase climbing up one wall to a balcony with a row of offices encircling the main factory floor. One leap up. One of the offices has a shattered window. I can't imagine who did that. Yeah, that's weird, freaking mm. vandals, man. Gee. Ah, oh, memories. Mm. Now, one corner just inside the front door, however, is different. It has been redecorated. What does it look like? Uh, it has black and red drapery, almost like a um, Moroccan kind of looking, kind of billowing stuff. A um, couple of chairs that are plush. They look nice, but probably aren't <coughs> terribly nice. They're like dusty. <laughs> um, and like a singular like hanging lamp that has a candle flickering in it. So there is a little bit of illumination here. This like goth Ikea thing is that you, you did this? Yes. <laughs> it's good, it's a good look. Thanks. Some of us can't stand untidied areas. He, he can hear you. I'm perfectly tidy, thank you. I, you know what, never mind. It doesn't matter. Pieces of the roof have collapsed, leaving patches of the floor exposed to the night sky, and there is just enough ambient light filtering in to illuminate the interior dimly. It is not as pitch black as it was the last time that you were here. You can see adequately enough for fighting. I walk right over to one of the seats and I like have a seat and sit down. <laughs> like it's almost like she's built um, a conversation pit, a meeting place, a place where people could sit and talk face to face if they were so inclined to do so. It's slightly charming and slightly strange in the middle of all this decay. I think the drapes go nicely with the rotting mixers. They don't match the carpet, though, and I thought that was a thing. Not always. Oh. Depends on who you're talking to. Uh... Well, apparently I'm going to plant my flag right here. So does that mean that Victor and Nelly are going to be in the little conversation pit waiting? Are you going to be seated? Yes, and I'm going to also activate heightened senses, um, mainly smell, to see if I can smell him coming through. 
You can only activate one sense at yep. a time. So you're choosing smell mm -hmm. because you would recognize his cologne. Mm -hmm. I will be standing with you guys because if I'm hiding, that makes it more obvious. And he can probably see, see me anyway. So it'll, I think it'll throw him more off guard that I'm standing there. We can go hide up on the balcony. I think that's yeah. a good idea. Be careful, it's... I'll be precarious fine. up there. What could possibly go wrong? It, later, we'll have to tell you all about that. Uh, with the, yeah, never mind. Oh. Never mind. So actually, yeah, I'd like to make my way up the stairs, and then I'm going to pick a spot, and I'm going to do uh, Cloak of Shadows. So. I need you to make a dexterity and athletics roll. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Enjoy. Mm -hmm. I'll include my hunger. One success. When the staircase begins to tear away from the wall, oh God. The horrible sound of tortured metal. Sorry, 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 sorry. You are barely able to keep oh. your balance oh, long enough to scamper to the top. <laughs> reaching the balcony. Well, I'm up here now. Okay. I use Cat's Grace and I scamper up. Cat's Grace means that you require no roll to keep your balance, and you practically dance up the staircase. I, and I activate prowess. When I see her do that, I lean over to Jasper and say, see, it's not so hard, it's just like, that's what you do. It's really, really time we're gonna have this conversation. I mean, if not now, when? <laughs> if not now, when? <laughs> you know, for the first time, you're correct. <laughs> yeah, she did it better than me, it's fine. So, your rouse check for prowess, Annabelle, did you pass or fail? I failed. Your hunger increases to two. But you add your potence to all your unarmed attacks. Uh, I'll see you later. X vanishes <laughs> from view. You can do that too? Oh. Any other special preparations? That I you activated want to prowess as well, you and as well. I succeeded. Your hunger does not, not increase. increase much to the beast's frustration. I never have any fun. I like to keep you in check. You suck. I was gonna shoot a text of Daffodil, just basically, you hear? Got your back. Perfect. If I wanted to raise my manipulation, uh, can I do that now, or do I need to wait until they're, we're actually interacting? Um, let's go ahead and do it now. That'll require a rouse check. I failed that check. So your hunger increases to two. Mmm. Your beast is practically salivating at the thought of the bloodshed to come. Never liked that guy. Uh, yeah, I never liked you either. But somehow I can learn to live with it. What's gonna happen? Who are we gonna get? Hmm. We'll see who presents themselves first. I can hardly wait. You won't have to wait long. I practically hear it licking its lips. So, everyone is in place. This seems like an excellent place to pause our story for a few moments. We'll see you again shortly. Hello, good evening, and welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. Season 2, Episode 9, Embrace the Dark. He's arrived. Bailey texts you, Victor. Just one word, incoming. What vehicle have you chosen this evening? I believe the armored limousine would make the most sense, given the circumstances. It does make a lot of sense, actually. When you roll into the parking lot of the abandoned factory that you recall from months ago, the place where you met Nellie again for the first time after all those years, there is only one vehicle in the otherwise deserted parking lot, and that is, of course, the ubiquitous black SUVs that Victor always seems to choose. So you emerge from the limousine, 
and um, your bodyguards take up their assigned positions. Chauncey, vast, mountainous. Chester, slim, rapacious, raptor-like to either side of you. Very well, gentlemen. Let us see what we shall see. You have your orders. Let us enter. Nelly. The clone's distinctive. He's here? He is. You can smell other scents as well. Cheap cologne, not jazz. Hair pomade, not him either. But his is distinctive. Let's go. I do not holster the weapon, but I, I do hold my hand out for yours and say, he knows where to find us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's... Uh, you want me to hold your hand too? I will. Nice. You no. and Nelly are seated. Jasper is not. Is that right? No, I'm standing. Behind them or beside them? Uh, behind. Is there two chairs next to each other? Nelly, are there? Yes. Okay, then I'm standing in kind the of in the middle. between the two of them behind. I Very actually well. try to strike a similar a setting as how Vannevar and Suzanne greeted us. Like, however they were, like relative to what we saw when we entered, do that. I see. Yeah. So a deliberate echo of those two monsters. Yes. As I enter, I can observe Jasper directly. Yes? You see him quite plainly in the dim light, standing midway between Nellie and Victor. You see no sign of anyone else yet. Interesting. As I enter, I shall sense the unseen. Yes, of course. Seven so that's four. wits plus aw specs and your hunger. X, mm -hmm. you are using Cloak, Cloak of Shadows or Cloak Unseen Sh Passage? Cloak of Shadows, and I'm not moving. Mm. That is rather a lot of successes. Why I didn't hide. Already. Ah, I see you've picked up a stray. Mm -hmm. Meow! It's not, a very, Meow. not a very kind thing to say, Chaz. Chauncey and Chester, seeing the three of you, immediately take two paces away from their master so that they are not all clumped together. Mr. Price, welcome back to the valley. Welcome back to my domain. Thank you, my dear Baron. I'm sorry, undisputed Baron. You know, I'm glad some people still understand that. It's been difficult lately communicating some simple truths uh, to the world. Have there been disputes? Uh, aren't there always? Aren't there always? And where is Annabelle? Do I sense her within the building? Hmm. Well, she does not appear to your sight. Sense the unseen reveals things that are hidden supernaturally. Hmm. I shall enhance my senses. Eyesight, yes. Yes. Annabelle, are you trying to remain hidden? Mm hmm In the shadows, yeah? I'm up in the balcony. Mm hmm Let's give it, um, let's give it dexterity and stealth. Make sure to include your hunger. One success. If she's here, she's well hidden. Hmm. <laughs> hmm, because you've traded down somewhat. Well, you know, she, we were a bit questionable for her tastes. 
And this is who you've chosen as her replacement, is it? Meow. Hmm. He has his uses. I suppose he also hates Mondays and loves lasagna. <laughs> you know, he's got to be on brand. Hmm. How does he know? Annabelle's uh, an idealist, and this is a time for pragmatism. I'm very glad to hear you say that, Baron. Now then, dear Lily, what is this in regards to? Oh, just wanted to um, call you back on that little thing that you seem to think you have over me. The little thing? Yes. Oh, are we referring to it in code? Oh, I mean, we can refer to it all you want. They all know. Oh. Well, they're very understanding, your mm-hmm. friends. Mm-hmm. I suppose that's why you like them so very much. Yes. They accept you. Unlike you. Diabolist, you are. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. It's not really that big of a deal. Mm. We all come from somewhere. Yes. Yes, we all do. So, you brought me here to tell me that I have no power over you, is that it? Yeah, the jig's up. Mm. Well, I suppose I can't hold your murder of Donna over you anymore. Your consumption of a very soul. Is that everything? Or was there anything further you wish to discuss? Uh, you were there at Elysium. Uh, I would like to see if there weren't some way that we can't arrive at some sort of understanding. An understanding? It's very funny, Baron, because the last time I approached you in my official capacity as Herald, the Prince, you turned down an offer of amnesty. That would have been a very simple way to solve any problems. Oh, that wasn't amnesty, Mr. Price. That was slavery in a gilded cage. That was a minimum security prison. That was still indentured servitude, which is still not acceptable. It was a clean slate with some stipulations. That's all. Hmm. And I should add, it was not my offer. It was the prince's. What do you wish me to communicate to his highness? I I just don't feel like Vannevar realizes the stakes that are ahead of all of us, and we have to find a way to make him understand that. How would you suggest I make the prince do anything? You've known him longer than I have. I'm open to suggestions if you have any. You see, it it's unusual the way the Baron here goes about things because I don't really want anything to do with any of you, but he is really trying to work things out in a diplomatic manner. And I gotta hand it to him. I'm, 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 Im- I'm impressed with his dedication to the matter because I would have said fuck you a long time ago. Yes, that seems to be your favorite phrase. It's how you responded to a rather generous offer. A job offer. Yeah. You see, unfortunately, there were um, conditions that came with that job that I found unacceptable. Law enforcement's not for everyone, I no. suppose. No. I'm more of a... I guess by your standards, more of a criminal, really. Yes, yes, I suppose that's how he would be described. Yeah. Outlaw, outlaw. Well, you know, oh, yes. whatever works. I'm not really interested in what um, mindless sheep want to call me. And <laughs> honestly, I'm not. That's, that's, that's what we're up against. That's, there's the Jaspers of the world that would rather just Say fuck it and rip each other to pieces. And I, I personally would rather it not be that way. Mm, I agree. I did not come here this evening to trade profanities or insults. So you've called me here as a consultant, is that it? As a last ditch effort at diplomacy. Hmm. 
before we embark upon a path that we cannot turn back from. Very well. I'm always willing to entertain reasonable conversation. What exactly are you seeking? And what are you willing to offer? Are we done with this bullshit? Again, profanity. Yeah, that's why part of the reason why I joined the fucking Anarchs. I don't have to put up with all this bullshit of the goddamn freaking ivory tower, okay? I'm over it. It's done. <laughs> I understand completely, my dear. You've made yourself very clear. And of course, I don't have that secret to hold over you anymore, so I suppose you're a free agent. What exactly do you want? I reach in and grab my knife, and I use Blink to hold the knife up to his throat. Hmm. Chaz has the option of using rapid reflexes if he chooses to. I believe I shall. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You draw your own weapon, the Beretta. And as your knife touches the skin of his throat, the muzzle of his pistol touches your chin. I would like to use rapid reflexes to bite my tongue and spit. Oh my. That's A, disgusting, and B, very cool. Is <laughs> anyone else doing anything? <laughs> I would like to mass dominate his ghouls. Mass dominate his ghouls, mass manipulation of the ghouls. So, yes. Jasper first, Make and then we'll check. check the balcony. First, the rouse check, please. Oh, I need a rouse check for using. I fail. Your hunger increases. increases. The beast salivates. Thirsting. Mm -hmm. Growling. Just bite his head off. What was the just, just, what's just, the just eat him. Come on. Go oh, to my, my place yet. yet. Give me this one thing. Oh, you'll get something. So, um, that will be... A strength versus blood sorcery roll, I believe? Actually, it's, um, since you're spitting, it's death oh, cloth athletics. That's right, you're right? correct. Chaz. Chaz, you have a choice. Yes, 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 yes. Six successes. Six successes is the margin. You can either dodge his incoming disgusting glob of poisonous blood, but that will mean you have to break your contact with Nellie and let her go. Or you can stand your ground, take the damage, but keep the gun on her. Hmm. I'm quite fond of this vest. I think I will dodge. I think you will dodge. It is a very nice <laughs> vest, actually. Can we not compliment him right now? I hate how much I love his style. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you don't have to lower your weapon, but you move several paces to the side. You are still sprayed with a portion of the blood emitted from Jasper's mouth. It smokes, it burns, it hurts. It ruins your clothing. Ugh. Chaz. And you do take several points of superficial damage. There you go. Chaz will mark off for you. Hey, Chaz. Fuck you. <laughs> I do have other vests. And I pull both weapons. So, Victor. I just say, Chester, Chauncey, kill each other, please. Uh, dominate won't, won't uh, you cannot issue a command that will force people to act against their nature, but. Shoot each other, please? Okay. <laughs> Shoot each other, please. And the rouse check? Oh, I, um, I, my hunger increased by one. And you'll need to make a rouse check for the dominate power, the mesmerize. I did. Okay. So, so a grand right. total of one increase. I, I, I did the checks. My okay. hunger's now at three. All right. Uh, and what I, was the result of the roll? A great number of successes. <laughs> How great are we talking about? Really great. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care to quantify it? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's in the process uh, of counting great. E 10 with a regular critical success and also a bestial success. So, ten total. Jesus. <laughs> For form's sake, we shall make a resistance roll, but I do not think that they can possibly 
beat that margin. <laughs> a double crit, it's possible, but yes. <laughs> I really want them to shoot each other. <laughs> Command is complicated by the fact that only one of them has a firearm. However, he is more than willing to shoot his partner. Chester, small, hawk-like, fast, pulls a pistol from underneath his jacket and fires. The sound of the gunshot echoes through the factory. It's quite loud. Um, I'm not going to let uh, Chauncey dodge. He's surprised. He has no idea this is coming. He's trying to shoot the other guy without a gun. gun. <laughs> takes a gunshot wound midsection, grunts in, in surprise, and looks at Chaz as though, like, huh? Hey, what's going on here? Um, now, on the balcony. What's happening? I'll come out of my unseen present, or what mm -hmm. is it? Cloak of, of Shadows. I hand him. It's happening. Okay, okay, let's do this. Okay. I hand him, I hand him my steak. Okay. And I start, fastball special asshole! Cooking! <laughs> I pick up X. Yeah, throw him. And throw him at Chad. Oh. No! <laughs> do you want to boost your strength before you do that? I do, I okay. have, I have, po uh, I have, uh, prowess. prowess Make a, you've already got that activated. Make a rouse check. Good. You good? Yes. Okay, so your strength increases to an even larger number of dots. You hoist X bodily off the floor and hurl him into the combat. What's your target? Chaz. My. So, Chaz, rapid reflexes. You want to try to dodge? With Blink, would I be able to move out of range? Mm, blink lets you close to a target or move away from a specific target. Uh, it isn't for fast maneuvering in general. Very well. But blink. your dodge, um, but you could dodge out of the way. Rapid reflex. Maybe. I okay. I will attempt to dodge. Let's see what the margin is here. You just ready? strength. Just um, no, it'll be um, <laughs> strength and let's make it uh, your brawl. Make sure to add uh, two extra dice. Yeah. Oh! You're very aerodynamic, X. Five. Yeah, and then for good measure, I'm gonna burn a whole power. Seven. Six. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> so. I don't know what that means, though. Well, <laughs> for me. <laughs> I can think a few things less dignified than being struck by X. <laughs> <laughs> there are probably some things less dignified, but none of them leap to mind. So, um, I'm not sure if you've ever been struck by a thrown Malkavian before. <laughs> not many people yeah. have. It was that time in 48. Mm -hmm. Good point, during the, during the war. Mm -hmm. it was X, post, you find yourself post. hurling through the air of the factory, uh, tumbling end over end without any control over where you land. Fortunately, <laughs> Annabelle has played some, some baseball, evidently. Okay, so you are struck square with the Malkavian. Slams into you, it does no actual damage. But you both go down in a heap of tangled limbs. It's very difficult to extricate yourself from this, shall we say, individual. Uh, and so you were both down for the round. While we're down, I'd like to maneuver myself to like, behind him, like spider monkey hold, like wrestler move mm. kind of thing, like holding his arms and wrapping my legs around his waist. Let's hold that intention for the next round. Yeah. You, you've just landed, right. slammed into a kindred, and you've both gone down in a pair of tangled limbs and bodies, and yeah. so in, before you can actually act, you'll need to extricate yourself from one another and maybe uh, get your center of gravity back. Coffee. Okay. Let's go give it to you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's start around the table. Floor. What's made that? of? What's the floor? Concrete. Concrete. Shit. Concrete. Um. All right. Uh. So I we see X hit. You see X strike Chaz. All right. I'm going to uh. Run over. I'm going to make another rouse check. 
and I'm going to slide my knife, not the machete. I have both drawn. Mm -hmm. Slide my knife along my arm to coat it in blood. To coat the blade. Yeah. Make the rouse check. Ooh, bestial failure. Mm, you can't you can't have a bestial fla- failure so on a rouse failure. check, so it's just a fail. Yep. So you are now at hunger three. I am indeed. I uh, the beast people. practically shouts in your ear, just bite him, drink him down, take you know you want to. And I slide. Do it. We'll see. I slide <laughs> the blade along my arm. Well, sport. <laughs> Okay, so you've got a blood-coated blade. Now, yeah. Annabelle, back at the top of the balcony, you have, uh, you're out of ammunition, you're out of X's. <laughs> <laughs> so I call down to the bodyguards. You gonna let him shoot at you? Do something about it. Ooh, taunting. Defenders, and you, defend yourself. Spark of rage. Spark of rage. <laughs> that will be, I believe it, isn't that a rouse check for it you? Is. Oh, a failure. Failure. That's a hungry. Yeah, hunger increases again. <sighs> so. Oh. You need to roll manipulation and potence. And they must roll composure and oh. intelligence. <sighs> Three. Burn a willpower. Burning a willpower to reroll. <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> Unfortunately, the distance from the balcony to the floor is perhaps too great for the spark of your inner fury to be effective because neither of the ghouls changes their attitude. <clears throat> X, you will probably want to disentangle yourself and try to grapple. Ooh, I want to tangle myself more. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get your arms around him to immobilize him? Kind of, yeah. So I'm really? holding his, I'm behind him holding his arms like so that he's unable to use them and wrapping my legs around his waist. Now, now, we've only just met. Combat, sure, yeah. It's the combat cuddle. <laughs> even, though you are, uh, even though you're down on the ground and tangled up with, uh, with X, you've lost none of your cat's grace and your dexterous reflexes. If you wish to avoid this combat or this grapple, you can attempt to dodge it or you can engage in it and attempt to do him harm. I believe I shall extricate myself extricate from the situation okay. and move as far away as possible. If blink so would be X. useful in this situation. Yeah. I need you to roll, please. I need you to roll strength and brawl. Hmm! Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do your thing. Yep. <laughs> Got one. Hmm. Your mole can be. Chaz is very quick indeed. It's, it's like you're grasping at air. One moment he's there, and the next minute he's halfway across the factory floor by the opposite wall. You barely saw him move. As I'm doing this, I assume I can speak as well, yes? You can speak, you can take another action if you wanted to. Very well. You still have your, your pistol in hand as well. Would my awe or entrancement be the best option to free my ghouls? Hmm. You can certainly attempt to uh, to influence the command that uh, has successfully addled the brain uh, of Chester. Um, probably entrancement. Not sure if it would actually break the command, but it might cause some significant confusion. Hmm. I think I will say loud enough for everyone to hear. Oh dear, Chester and Chauncey are fighting. Whatever shall we do, Chelsea? Chelsea. And I will, I still have my gun in my hand at this mm-hmm. point, yes? You do. Very well. Who's closest to me? The balcony is too far away. You, ha- you are equally distant from X, Jasper, Nellie, and Victor. You have your pick of targets. Knowing the powers of the kindred as I do, would pain be enough on the controlling Kindred's part be enough to snap their control over. It would certainly force a recheck, yes. Very well. I believe I will fire at the Baron. And uh, I have also issued that command. So, Victor, do you want to dodge? 
I'm not good at that, but yes, I would like to. <laughs> Dex and athletics, you have no cover. Uh, this is another one of those times that I have more blood dice than I've got <laughs> dice to roll, if that's relevant. Yeah, it is. And no successes. Okay. I do have my fortitude, though. You take three points of superficial damage as the bullets slam into you. Is that before or after my fortitude? That's um, after your fortitude to have your okay. pistol. Okay. So, a little superficial damage. Mm -hmm. Not lethal, but hardly convenient. Not quite enough to impair <coughs> you, but very painful indeed. I'm, I'm like, going to. Man, check I Chaunt's like willpower. this shirt. <laughs> I like this best. We both <sighs> like our wolf boots. <sighs> and then a shot rings out from above you. Somewhere, maybe on the roof, firing through a skylight. Sound is a high-powered rifle bullet blasting through the air. <laughs> Jasper, you take four points of superficial Not damage so. <laughs> as the rifle bullet tears through your flesh. Can I see where it's coming from? One of the ruined skylights up on the roof. <coughs> I'm going upstairs. <laughs> Nelly. Um, I'm gonna start closing in. When I saw him blink, I was gonna try to basically mimic him too. You have the same power. Awesome, so I'm blinking over. I'm gonna use a rapid reflex to bite my hand and grab his gun and use... Um, Corrosive vitae? Yep. So. You want to close the distance. You race across the warehouse floor mm -hmm. faster than the eye can follow. When you reach Chaz, mm -hmm. your fangs mm -hmm. rip into your hand and you're reaching for his gun. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you want to try to dodge out of the way to yeah. not let her grab, grab that? Okay, I'm gonna roll Dex and Athletics for you. Uh, you'll need to roll, um, since it's a grab, it's Dexterity and Brawl. Uh, if you connect, We'll check that corrosive power. <laughs> Two successes. Two successes. <coughs> Tie. So, two things happen. As his defensive move, you want to fire at her? You want to shoot her? Or you I want to suspect so, yes. Yeah. So if she okay. finds her way in the way of the muzzle, she just happens to be there. <laughs> okay, so two things happen. You fire at her, point blank range. Nelly, you're within inches of the heavy pistol shot. It's gonna <laughs> blow a hole in your chest. You're going to take five points of superficial damage, and that's a lot for you. But you're also going to grab the gun as the muzzle fires and close your bleeding hand around it. It's hot because it's just fired a bullet straight through you. It's not hot enough to set you on fire, but it's painful. It burns. And the air is filled with the smell of smoking, burning, sizzling metal. She's melting your pistol with her blood. Probably best to abandon it rather than attempting to fire again and Probably. losing a hand. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, Victor. Mesmerism on Chaz. <laughs> He's within eyesight, but he is not looking at you. His attention is on Nelly, who is right in front of him, with a pistol at her chest. You need his eye contact to do it. Hmm. Activate awe. The bodyguards are close enough to be affected by that. Now they are still <laughs> engaged in trying. Uh, uh, They're still fighting. Still other? trying to shoot Chauncey, and Chauncey is. Trying not to be shot. Um, I'm going to, uh, hmm. Soaring leap uh, to, to get uh, closer. You can clear about yeah. half the distance with one leap. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm closing in on them. I want to get between the door and um, 
Chaz. So that if he sure tries to run, I'll be between him and the door. You want to try to block his escape through the doorway. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, tensing your muscles, you propel yourself through the air and land square in the middle of the warehouse in a direct line between Chaz and the main escape route. Mm -hmm. As long as the ghouls are still occupied, I'm trying to get close to him. Got it. That's it. X? Okay. So, I ended up in the plush, like, VIP area. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a running sprint at one of the hanging uh, curtains. The ones, I'm gonna the, the black silk curtains that Nellie has, has arranged so artfully? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab onto it, like I'm gonna jump up and grab on as high as I can and swing on it and then swing back towards whatever minion's closest. I see, so a very Errol Flynn kind of move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? I'm an aerialist. <laughs> Dexterity and athletics, please. Okay. <sighs> well, actually, cut up, cut up. Nothing. Yeah, that's what perhaps what I thought. <laughs> Chester just shoots you. He looks up, kind of, uh, uh, and fires. Yeah. The bullet finds home. Three superficial damage. You okay. All these shots are loud, and the air is starting to stink of cordite. Smells bad, Annabelle. I'm the closest to the roof. I start running up after the shooter. You want to get up to the roof? Yeah. Pretty easy to jump on top of uh, filing cabinets and pieces of machinery and haul yourself up through a, a hole. What you see on the roof is uh, a slender figure wearing black jumpsuit. She's got a tactical mic on her head, and she's got a military-grade high-powered rifle aimed through the skylight. I take a running leap and I jump on her. Okay, your intent is to take her down, yeah. knock her down. Um, you will need to full roll. Full body tackle. Full body tackle, yeah. strength and brawl. With, is it the increased strength still? Mm -hmm. Still up there for the scene. Okay. So I'm going to attempt to roll out of your way. And potence? Potence as well. If you hit her, you can do damage. Rolled three successes. Three. Three? Okay. So you slam into her. She doesn't dodge out of the way, but you don't hurt her either. And she retains her grip on the rifle. So you both go down. She's no longer in a position to be aiming. Sort of tumbling over the roof together. The rifle between you. So, Jasper. After taking a nice high-powered rifle shot, I'm feeling good about myself. Do I see <laughs> Annabelle go up? Can I see Annabelle go up? I think you saw her head to the roof. Great, then I'm going to ignore what's on the roof because I'm going to trust that she's not going to let me die. And I'm going to... And they're across the room from me, correct? Mm-hmm. Chaz is looking at Nellie, correct? Chaz's attention is on Nellie, who's just taken a, a, a pistol blast at yeah. point-blank range to the chest. Unseen passage. Fading from view. No one's eyes are on you. I'm okay. Don't increase my hunger. And I'm going to uh, get over right behind Chaz. You're going to make your way yeah. across the factory floor. It's going to take you all around to sneak fine. on over I'll there. I'll get over there. You trying to be quiet or Being just quiet. not seen? So let's have some stealth. That's perfect. I can do that. There's a lot of gunfire and insanity, so. Mm -hmm. And I have a uh, specialty versus kindred. Add it. Add the bonus die. <laughs> the pointed look. Sweet, I'm going to do it. That's three successes. Three successes. Meanwhile, Chauncey and Chester have not yet settled their <clears throat> disagreement, uh, but Chester, uh, excuse me, Chauncey, seeing that he's not going to escape the unexpected wrath of his friend, simply breaks off the combat and starts racing across the warehouse headed for Victor coming down on you like a human mountain. Do you want to dodge him, or do you want to keep moving towards Chaz? Uh, I, I will attempt to dodge to the best of my ability. Dexterity and athletics. Again, not my thing. Still nothing. Nothing at all? Mm -mm. Unless I can interrupt him with a dominate. <laughs> He plows into you from behind mm -hmm. and throws his massive arms around your chest in a grapple. So at the moment, 
can't reach your gun or any other weapons, and you'll be able to try to break free on your next turn. Okay. Chaz. Hmm. My gun is inoperative. And you rough. don't think it's going to work anymore. The yes, barrel I, seems to be pitted, corroded, and melted. I, I did say I think I, I let I think you go. discard it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I shall use blink, I believe. Uh, Victor is otherwise occupied in the doorways. He's always. a little busy at this yes. time. Yes, yes. You don't see Jasper anywhere. Um, Chester seems to be still afflicted by some sort of unfortunate malady of the consciousness and keeps trying to fire his gun at Chauncey. His pay um, will be docked. X is uh, swinging back and forth on a, a silk curtain, or rather ineffectively. You don't see Annabelle anywhere. We don't need color commentary on effectiveness. I'm directly in front of Millie. Directly in front of her. Although with Blink, you can be anywhere else you want to be. Au revoir, ma chérie. I move as quickly and as far away as possible towards the door. Towards the exit, trying to get out. Yes. Okay. Uh, drawing my holdout knife as I go. Take that sharp little blade out. Keep it in your hand. Okay. Back to the roof in a moment, but first, Nelly. Um, I'm just going to, when he says that to me, I'm going to blow a kiss at him and say goodbye. Okay. Now, you're able to keep up if you want to. So I'm blowing that kiss, and I'm going to blink, but stay a little bit further back. Hopefully that signal was caught. So you don't want to catch up to him directly? Not, nope, not okay. exactly yet. I'm waiting for something. Got it. Back on the roof, Annabelle. Um, so I grab and hold on to the rifle, and I kick her square in the chest. Uh, let's see here. Strength and brawl. She can't really dodge from here. Instead, she'll try to bring the rifle around a bear to shoot you from a prone position on her back. Mm. She fires, but only two successes. Um, I'm gonna burn a willpower. Two successes. A tie. So, your boot strikes home, <gasps> smashing her in the chest. Your strength, of course, Potence is added to the blow. Uh, you hear, you feel under your boots something in her chest give way. <coughs> Bone, cartilage, maybe internal <coughs> organs. Uh, she goes sprawling across the roof and loses her grip on the rifle. So. Second gunshot wound sound rings out from a different direction. Chaz. Not Chelsea's rifle. The high powered round catches you in the small of the back and spins you around in place. No, oh, tell about fair play, I suppose. Extraordinarily painful. It takes six superficial damage. And that's after it being halved. Fortunately, you had some advance preparation in place, as we talked about. So you don't go down. But scanning the ceiling above you, you don't see where the shot came from. You can't find the shooter. Mm, probably somewhere inside the building, huh? Could well be. Yes. Maybe up on the balcony. Jasper? How far away am I from him? Um, you um, wanted to get across the building. So yeah, so the I ran. Is that he moved yeah, while he you were still moving. He moved moving. towards the door, which I assume I was heading in at least in that somewhat direction. of the so direction. So you are roughly in the middle of the warehouse, on a level where Victor is. Am I within six meters? That would be um, a little bit over what thirty-five feet. Yeah. yeah, you can get there. I would like to soaring leap all the way to him, and as I land, I'm going to plunge both weapons into his chest. That's rather a lot of weapons. Yes. <laughs> One of them is still covered in my blood. I will roll the dodge. Okay. Or do you wish to stab him instead? I think dodging is dodging best. Dodging is best? Yeah. Dodging suits you best? Uh, let's make a rouse check for you to summon up a little extra speed. The rouse check is successful, so you do not increase your hunger. Five successes. <gasps> Uh, that is 
a uh, six successes with a messy critical. With a messy crit. Okay. One of the blades has been coated, is that right? Yes, one of the blades has been coated. Mm. My knife specifically. Of course. <laughs> what else would it be? I have the, the machete. I don't know what the machete's damage is. My knife adds a plus two. Mm-hmm. So same with the machete. Okay. Your margin, your, you got six? Uh, six with a messy critical, yes. Okay, so the margin is one plus the messy crit. And how, you have one rouse check on that, is that correct? Uh, yes, one rouse check on that. Okay. So none of the superficial damage incoming would be halved for him. He would take the full superficial mm-hmm. in addition to the gunshot wound. Yeah. So with a margin of only one, it's a grazing wound at best. Mm-hmm. Probably a cut through your suit jacket and yeah. coat along your arm. Your wardrobe is not faring well this evening. Not at all. Not at all. So the I knife do? um, doesn't bite deeply, but something is wrong. The wound burns. It feels like fire. Well, here's an Osferatu. He's probably covered in feces. Could be gangrene. Could be some other horrible disease. You never know. <sighs> we'll this sort is not that out inside of my mouth. Oh. Indeed. Ah, worse than I expected. Then. Mm-hmm. Annabelle? Is, uh, is the target incapacitated? Not yet. She's still moving. She must have Chaz's blood in her because that should have taken her out. She is crawling across the roof trying to get to her firearm. She has another one? No, the rifle that she lost her grip on. Because I was holding it. Oh, you grabbed it. Excuse me. So you've got a hold of the rifle. So she is simply crawling away from you. She reaches the edge of the roof. Hey. She looks back over her shoulder. Stop. Help us. What? There's entrancement. I'm okay. You make succeed in the rouse check? Yes. Okay. So that's um, presence power. Charisma and presence together. I will roll her composure and wits. Charisma, presence. And your presence together. (laughs) Three successes. Oh, six. Mm. It's rather a lot. Yeah. The pupils of her eyes dilate and grow wide. Please, you don't know what he's done to you. You don't know what he's doing to others. You can't let him do it again. You don't know what you're saying. You don't know him like I do. He's the best. You should should give him a chance. Yeah, I I bet he really means it when he says he loves you, right? He does love me. I, I bet he says he's sorry when he hits you, right? He's never hit me. Look, I want to help you. I like you, I really do. But you've got it all wrong. He's a good man. And he, can I have my rifle back, please? My name's Chelsea, what's your name? I'm Annabelle. You're really pretty. Thanks, you're looking great in that cat suit yeah. yourself. Um, <clears throat> hey, I heard that his bodyguards, though, they're not to be trusted. That's, you're fine, that's, though, right? That's 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 not true. Ch- Chester and Chauncey, are, they're, they're great. They're completely trustworthy. You sure I can't have my rifle back? Something is going on here, Annabelle. You notice that her chest underneath her her bodysuit, the skin, the bones are beginning to move and knit together to mend. She's clearly not human. She's probably had Chaz's blood and she's healing herself where you struck her with your boot. But she hasn't taken her eyes off you and she hasn't made any threatening moves. Meanwhile, back down at the Pirates of the Caribbean. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm on this drape. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to wrap my leg around it, like a silk type of Mm -hmm. thing, and I'm going to flip upside down. And I'm facing uh, Chester, because he shot me, Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm going to use Compel. Okay. So let's see if you can perform the maneuver. Yeah. Dexterity and athletics. <laughs> oh boy. If you fail, you fall. Okay. One success. You maintain your grip and manage a rather awkward flip. 
Not the most graceful of maneuvers, but um, passable. Okay. You know? maybe, maybe maybe five out of ten. <laughs> okay, I don't need numbers. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Everyone's you want to use critic. compel, which is free. Yes. Um, what do you? What single word, non-lethal command do you want to issue? Oh, is it single word or single could I say word plug your ears? It's a single word. Okay. Uh, uh, duck. Duck. Okay. So um, you'll need to roll for that. Yeah. Um, it's your charisma plus your dominate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make his intelligence and resolve. One success. Three successes. Three successes. Uh, he does as he's told and ducks as though trying to avoid a flying object. Okay. Chaz, things are not going well. No, yeah, I think it's time to abscond, actually. Headed I'll be out. blinking as far away as possible. Another blink, headed toward the, you want to keep moving out? This would take me out of the- This would take you out of the building. Yes, make. I think directly to the car and then home for a nice long drink. Got it. Of someone. Of someone else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nelly? Oh, I'm going after him. You want to keep pace? Yeah. You and have the same power, so. Yep. How close do you want to get? And do you want to attempt to stop him from getting into the car? Yes. What are you using? Um, you can make an attack at the end of your blink action. I'm just, I'm gonna take out my, my knife. Your knife or one of your new knives? My knife. Your knife. Mm -hmm. Chaz, you can see this happening. You can dodge mm -hmm. at the end of your action or you can attempt to injure Nelly. Or you can keep trying for the car. Now, it would take some time to get into the car, wouldn't it? I'm afraid so. In fact, perhaps blinking might be the best way to go. Okay. Least. You want to try to make it to the car? Mm -hmm. Is that the case? Would I be able to reach the car in one round? You can reach the car. You might not be able to get into it before she catches you. Very well. Could I position myself on the other side of the car? You could put the car between you and her. I believe that's what I'll do. Okay. So, Nella, you'll catch up to him. You'll get to make the attack. I'm gonna count his movement as a dodge. Okay. If he's successful, he gets to the other side of the car and puts the vehicle between you and him. You'd have to come over the hood at him to get to him. Okay. Um, go ahead and make dexterity and melee. Do you want to increase your dexterity before you do it? Yes. Make a rouse check to see if your beast gets the better of you. I'm I'm good, success. You're good, success. Yeah. You, your hunger does not increase. Mm -mm. Dodge pool. Increase by one, right? Mm -hmm. And you Dexterity said- Dexterity increases. You said Dex, Dex and melee, correct? Dexterity and melee. Cool. That's a bit of extra dice, right? Mm-hmm. Two successes. Oh, no. one more. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Thank you. Need them all. I'm gonna burn a willpower. <laughs> okay, you wanna burn a willpower for a reroll? You can reroll up to three normal dice. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Son of a ding dong. <laughs> Just three successes. It's, it's there for, let's see, what did we get, a two? So you still got a margin of one. So you'll strike him with a knife, but it's not enough to stop him. He's going to take the wound for superficial damage and put the car between you and he. Chaz, even though the knife was not a serious wound, you're beginning to fatigue. This is going very badly for you. And then, Victor, you and Chauncey are engaged. So he's got me from behind like a bear hug? Mm -hmm. So his head's like right here next to me? Yes. Bite him, drain him. You're gonna bite him? Oh, yes, okay. So Just dig my, I don't even care if it's his neck, just dig my fangs into whatever of him I can get. A biting attack. Mm -hmm. uh, make it brawl. With the intention of draining him. I'm not like biting to hurt him, I'm just like, I'm gonna, gonna feed on you're him. You're gonna feed on him. Mm -hmm. It's at minus two. So four, is that with the minus two? Uh, four, four total, so before okay. the two total, I suppose. Okay, two total. Mm -hmm. um, that is enough, your fangs sink into his exposed neck. He twitches once as though he's gonna try to shake you off and then he is given over to the ecstasy of the bite. 
Finish him. Drain him. Did you just bite my ghoul? Oh, I just killed your ghoul. <laughs> Eat all you want. We'll make more. <laughs> You're going to drink him dry. Take him all. The taste is intoxicating. It is a head rush. <laughs> it tastes all British. <laughs> <laughs> few moments he's gone. <coughs> your hunger is sated. Take away all your hunger dice. <coughs> and then soaring leap outside. Chauncey collapses very heavily to the cement floor. Now that was your action next mm -hmm. round. You'll be able to make a move. Mm -hmm. It's quite a rush. <sighs> feel good. Feel good. There was a, a, you feel a certain resonance in the blood. A certain emotional taste. It makes you feel powerful stronger than you were. Mm. Like your limbs are infused with additional might. I need to get some more of that. Yeah. This is when another rifle shot rings out. Mm. I'm behind the armored vehicle. You are behind the armored vehicle, so I'm going to count this as cover. No bit. Going to uh, take away dice from the shooter. And uh, would I be able to spend will in order to increase this dodge? Uh, let's see. Um, if we take this as a dodge, you can um, you can spend willpower to re-roll if this goes badly for you. Very well. If that is the case, I think that's what I'll do. Nope, that's not enough dice. So you have partial cover behind the armored limousine. Nope. benefit of being a sniper is that you total up rather a lot of successes. You've got one hunger and a good dodge pool. Shot strikes you in the chest. You fall forward heavily on the hood of the car. Some of your vitae leaking out of the chest wound to smear <clears throat> the metal, dark against the glossy black of the paint job. You're barely moving. You can barely stand on your feet. You don't think you're gonna make it into the car. And I am unable to blink away any further. You can still call upon the power of your blood to move you undead limbs, injured though you are, quickly in a different direction. Yes. Is that what you want to do? Yes, I believe so. As okay. far away as possible. <clears throat> Nelly? I'm following. What do you do when you get there? I'm pulling out my stake with my rapid reflex and I'm gonna just plunge it right into wherever that hole is at that he, he has. Where's his heart? Okay. So. Staking. It's a called shot, and you need to get at least five damage. So, with your pool, you're going to need to make a rouse check to increase your strength again. Fail. Your beast awakens. It senses that you are about to be victorious, and it wants you to give it the taste that it's had before. Don't stake him. Bite him. Shh. Drain him dry. No. Just like you did to his child. No. Just like you did to your sister. No, I'm stronger than that. So you have an additional extra die in your strength pool. Add that to your melee. Include your hunger dices and make the roll. Uh, melee and you said strength? Mm-hmm. Strength and melee. Now you have bonus dice in your strength pool. You should now be at five strength mm -hmm. because of the rouse. Four strength, excuse me. Mm. Right? Yeah. Seven. And you're looking for five successes. We're gonna burn a willpower. Okay, superficial damage to willpower to reroll up to three dice. <laughs> Did you get five? 
Sure did. Five successes. <laughs> I shall, of course, attempt to dodge. Here. I'm going to take dice away from you because of your um, injuries. Understand. Because you're not moving at all well. You got five? Well, you can tie, which would let you dodge, but anything less than that. You're going to, uh, it's probably the right time to burn willpower to reroll. I think so, <laughs> yes. No time like the present. <laughs> Four isn't good enough. You feel the point of the wooden shaft pierce you as you're trying to crawl away at high speed. It's the strangest sensation. One moment you have free will and all your faculties, and the next you're frozen, immobile. You can't move, you're paralyzed can't speak. Might I get out a word as the... As this wooden stake is making its way into your heart? Of course. Ah. Well done, darling. Now, you do not die. And that is the horrible thing. The wooden stake in the vampire's heart does not kill. It paralyzes. And you remain horribly aware of all that transpires from <laughs> here on out as long as you're not in torpor. So, I Jasper. I would like to land on the hood of the car. From the doorway, you can leap. Yeah. Landing on the hood of the limousine. Kill him, now. If you don't, I will. Annabelle, up on the roof with Chelsea. Stay here. I can see everything that's happening. You can see right. over the edge of the roof. With, uh, if you were lucky and willing to take a little bruising, you could probably make it down there. I'd do it. Gonna jump it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, strength and athletics. Three. Three. It's a challenging, so the margin is missed by one. Take a point of superficial damage from incidental scrapes and bruises <laughs> as you land. Not quite the superhero four-point landing that you were hoping for. But if you practice, you, you might get there. I, I, I'll, I land sort of like on, on my hands and knees and then I kind of <laughs> dust off a little bit. Yeah. 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 And then, I, and then I run over to them. Over to the limousine? Yeah. X? Okay, I'm gonna use my uh, core muscles to start swinging on the, mm -hmm. on the thing Give yourself again. a little bit momentum? Yeah. And then what? But I'm still going to look at Chester, and I'm gonna say, again, I'm gonna compel him again. What do you want me? What do you want him to do? Duck. Ah. Go oh ahead and make the same God. roll. Please okay. let your third command be goose. Don't ruin it! Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna pull the stake out enough for you to say that. <laughs> 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 Well, sorry, it was Charisma and uh, Dominate. Yeah. That's right. One success. Three, baby. He ducks again. Cool. You're just going to keep him bobbing up and down. And Who knows, he's, really? He's yeah. going to squats <laughs> in for the day. He's got a gun. Victor? I soaring leap over. You uh, So you exit the building and uh, cover the remaining distance with a powerful leap, landing next to the limousine. And when I land next to you, I say, I'll do it if you want. If you can't, I will. Stop, just all of you, stop. It needs to happen now. Now. Just take my knife and just slit his throat. <sighs> Let's be clear. You're going to send him to the final death. Sure am. He's immobile, he cannot fight back. So. The wickedly curved knife leaves the sheath. You stand over him. You reach down, pull his head back by his hair. I'd like to whisper something to him. He can hear you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I ever fucking loved you. You slit his throat. <coughs> Oh, 
No roll is necessary with an immobile opponent. Cut is clean, and his head comes away from his neck. As she does that, if you would permit me, he took some things from me. And I'm gonna take the head and go (laughs) and suck blood from the stump of the neck. By all means. Several things happen at once. (laughs) (laughs) I throw up a little in my mouth. Uh. (laughs) Chaz's body begins to decompose, to disintegrate. The decades that his undead state has cheated the final death begin to catch up with the body very quickly. Skin begins to uh, never mind rot and begins to crumble into a fine gray ash. I go over and I hold Nellie. The head remains intact long enough for you to get a few disgusting slurps of kindred fighting, and it is delicious. Much better. It is intoxicating. <clears throat> A bit spicy, a little insouciant, maybe. <laughs> With a dry undertone. How many? And there's age in it. But then the head, too, begins to follow the body into decay. And very quickly, quickly, more quickly than you think might be possible, there is little left but ash on the night breeze. Sorry, I don't get often get a chance to do that. I would, uh, I'd like to open the door of the limo. Uh, there is still Chester to deal with and Chelsea. Are the keys in the car? They are not. Are the keys in the ashes? <laughs> <laughs> they are not. <laughs> I just like, drive my own limo. <laughs> I'm like, uh... Where are the others taken care of? This is mine now. Let's go get the keys. <laughs> and I head back inside. The sniper's so, on the roof. Meanwhile, you are playing a game of swing and duck with Chester, who, <laughs> every time you swing toward him, is compelled to duck again. Doesn't get old. <laughs> which is the scene that you walk in on. I... Little uh, help. Duck! <laughs> I'm gonna... Nellie? You receive a text message from Daffodil. Okay. It's just a heart emoji. You okay, Nellie? I've waited for that moment for so long. How did it feel? Liberating. Okay. There was one on the roof, wasn't there? Jeez. What happens to ghouls when they're uh, master dies. What does happen to ghouls when their master dies? That's a very good question. Perhaps you will find out. So, you're not going to find out from Chester because he's a little busy bobbing up and down like a top. Um. Help! Are you? Help, duck! Okay. (laughs) I'll go over, I'll jump, I'll fly over there. You want to dispatch cover the, the ghoul. Cover the floor. Yeah. Cover the ground yeah. between you. As fast. What do you want to do to Chester? Uh, he's concentrating on him and ducking. Mm-hmm. He's compelled to duck every time X swings forward and instructs him to do so. This is unfortunate. And he's a ghoul, correct, as far as we know? As far as you know, he is. Consensus? Uh, Get him! Kill him too. <laughs> I'm like, you want to cut his throat? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like Annabelle and I. Are like, this is different than killing Chaz, of course. He yeah, but he's not a human and he's not innocent. The knife strikes true, and in moments there is a spreading pool of blood on the cement floor of the factory. Anyone who is at hunger three? Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> The <laughs> air of the factory is filled with the scent of fresh human blood. Where's the other one? 
right now. I don't want anyone knowing we were here. She's up on the roof. I start searching the both Chester and Chauncey for the keys to that car. All right. And I say, goose. I'm going to try and get that up the roof as fast as possible. <laughs> I you want to get, get to the roof as fast as possible. If I can jump to the balcony and jump up. It's pretty easy to traverse the uh, distance, especially now that you're not under fire. Yeah. She's up there. She's curled up in a tight ball in the corner of the roof, crying. Hey. She looks up with tear-stained eyes at you. He's gone, isn't he? Yeah. I can feel it. Yeah, he's not coming back. And what happens to me? What does happen to you? What she, do you her want? eyes get big and she tries to back away from you. Um, realization dawns in her, but there's nothing behind her but the drop. I don't have to hurt you, but you did shoot me. And that hurt quite a lot. As I pull open the hole she left in my chest. So, what happens to you? I'm asking a question. I'll go with you. I don't have any place to go now. Well, first you're coming downstairs with me before we do anything. And I'm gonna, I'm still my potency activated, I'm just going to lift her. She doesn't resist. And take her downstairs. She seems to have no will left. Victor, you do find the keys. And Bailey is ready to help you clean up and get out of here. I just need to get the blood off the hood of the limo. Because <laughs> that's important. Yeah. Well, I don't want anybody to spot a blood spattered limo driving down the street. It is practical. Is it safe to assume that uh, there'll be a cleanup detail? Yes. Uh, I will drive uh, the SUV and I want Bailey to drive the limo out of here. But do I see her when she comes back down? I assume I'm holding her. <laughs> of course you do. Uh, I look at her and I say, um, what's your name? I'm Chelsea. Chelsea, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to forget all about this. What power are you using? Um, forgetful mind to take the last 10 minutes away from her, what she witnessed. It'll take some time. You want to do it in the limo on the ride back? You'll have to sort through memories and create new ones that are convincing she won't try to decipher later. Okay. Bailey asks, um, do you want me to stay and <clears throat> help the crew clean up, sir? No, we need to get the car we came in and their car out of it. We need to be gone. Yes, sir. I'll text Ramona. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> you know what? Let's just burn this building to the ground. Uh, get, um, <laughs> get the yeah. rat pack out of here. We're burning down the house. Maybe don't oh, text wait. that, but she texts back. <laughs> you guys split. I got it covered. Let me take care of it. As I'm walking to the car, I'll still carry the woman. Um, I walk past Nelly and I say, I'm glad you didn't hesitate. And I get in the car. Annabelle, your phone buzzes with a reminder that you have something to do. I open up the playlist. The song is burning down the house. Here's where the chapter in our story ends, but this is not the end of our chronicle. We've seen that in the world of darkness, so often all choices are equally bad, and yet one must choose. And when the choice is between peace and war, sometimes you must choose to fight because sometimes peace is just another word for surrender. These are important kindred. They represent others, they have influence because others trust them. If you convince them then many will follow. What if I don't want to make it? No, 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 no. That's not an option anymore. You will, and you must. And you can. Look at them. Look how lost they've become. They're desperate for this. They need this. That fire inside of you. That 
tap into that, that conviction. That's what we're missing, and that's what you have. Light that fire ablaze in them. And you know how to do that. You got this. You got this. Seventy-five years ago, the free states were born here in Los Angeles. Born in blood, born in fire, born in a desperate struggle against tyranny and oppression. The free states were an expression of that struggle, and they represented an ideal, a home. A home for all kindred, who agreed to be responsible for themselves and who believed that it was better to work together to survive rather than to vie for power. Yeah. Regardless of clan, regardless of generation, all were welcome here. It was a good dream. But that dream has faded, eroded by the very same thinking and the old values that, that allowed Tyrion to flourish in the first place. Yeah. It has left us vulnerable. The Inquisition, to the Camarilla, and to our own petty squabbles and jealous intrigues. But it's not too late. The dream has dwindled, but it is not extinguished. Oh. It can burn again. Yeah. It can be rekindled tonight. Yeah. Here! Yeah. Now! Yeah. We can reignite the spark that will drive the Anarch movement. We can reclaim it. Few of us asked to be what we are. Fewer still of us are at peace with it, myself included. But we are the kindred of Los Angeles! <laughs> and we will not allow them to march in here and claim that it is theirs by right of superior blood. No. We, every single one of you, deserves a home! <laughs> of our Thomas wants to take our homes from us, but it will not happen! No! We will not bow to him! No! We will not give him our streets! No! Our havens! No! We will not let him choose our leaders! No! We will not pay his fucking blood tax! We will not surrender the dream! No! Freedom over oppression! No! Liberty over tyranny! No! Independence over servitude! the kindred of Los Angeles, make this decision once again. We make it here, we make it now, we make it together! Tender. With scientific precision and emotional profiling, we guarantee you'll find the perfect connection. Whoever you are, wherever you are, your soulmate is within reach. Discover the science of emotions. Tender. Your soulmate algorithm. <laughs>